Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Danbury Hattricks Hockey on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. I'm Casey Bryant alongside Jack O'Mara, bringing you exclusive live coverage of Danbury Hattricks Hockey tonight and all season long as the Danbury Hattricks are set to square off against a fellow expansion franchise tonight in the Delaware Thunder. We thank everyone for tuning in out there, and it is a key Eastern Division matchup with a big six points on the line here, Jack. The Danbury Hattricks enter tonight on a five-game winning streak, and they look like a completely different team than the start of the season. Season. They do. They've responded very well to adversity this year. They started to get into a groove. They won three straight games around Thanksgiving weekend in Elmira, a tough place to play. And, you know, they're, they're rising to the challenge right now. And they've had a lot of adversity thrown in their faces. They're finding ways to score goals. Key contributors continue to contribute. And they're just playing smart, physical hockey in all three stages of the game, defensively, offensively, and forward. So the Danbury Hattricks, our total, have a five-game winning streak. They are 7-4-0-2. Oh, they go up against a Delaware Thunder team that is 2-10-0-0. Oh, oh. Not the start that the Delaware Thunder would have wanted, Jack, but certainly you figure that this team is going to be hungry. They're going to have a star forward out on the ice tonight starting in Ryan Marker. This is a team that is not without talent. No, they're not. I mean, it, it's, it's tough when you're showing up as a new organization sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get going and it, that might take a full season for them to get clicking this is a huge opportunity for them because they know sometimes the hat tricks have been vulnerable at home especially on those backdoor passes we've seen it all season long if they can play to a couple of their strengths try to work their way through the weaknesses dylan kelly won't be in goal anymore for the hat tricks as he got the call up to the sphl those are some things they'll have to play on. They're going to have to play a very, very clean, focused game of hockey to beat a hot team like the Danbury Hatricks. Your Ameriprise financial goaltending matchup of the evening going in net for the Delaware Thunder is number 40, Cody Karpinski, who is a newcomer to this Thunder team, was signed, was not on a roster as of yet in this season. Last season, he spent with split between Watertown and Port Huron, had very impressive numbers in Watertown, was 7-5-0 with a 9-15 save percentage and 386 goals against average. Went to Port Huron and struggled mightily, had a 5-10-0 record with an 8 63 save percentage and 615 goals against average, markedly different with the two. Going in netting tonight for the Danbury Hatricks will be Tom McGuckin, who enters at 2 2 and 1 with a 906 save percentage and 3.49 goals against average. We're getting ready for the performance of the national anthem here tonight at Danbury Arena. We'll turn it over to our PA announcer, Kieran Stack, and the performance of the national anthem by the Mad Hatter Chorus. The Mad Hatter Chorus performing tonight's national anthem. Our starting lineups for the evening, first for the visiting Delaware Thunder in net, as mentioned before, is number 40, 40 Cody Karpinski. On the forward lines, they will have number 16, Ryan Marker, number 23, Eric Masters, and number 95, a newcomer in acquired via trade from the Battle Creek Rumble Bees, Deep Nat. On defense, they will have Charlie Penns Jr., the captain, alongside Daniel DeCristofaro. Starting lineup for your Danbury hat tricks in goal for them will be Tom McGuckin. Their forward lines will consist of Johnny Ruiz, Phil Bronner, and Nicola Levesque. A terrible threesome for the Danbury hat tricks that have been absolutely stellar of recent 
games, and on defense they will have Aaron Atwell and Steve Brown. But that top line for the Danbury Hattricks, Jack, how electric have they been in the last couple of games? They've been great. I mean, they've been one of the reasons why this team is so hot right now, and they're kind of having this trickle-down effect where they're producing so much. Other guys see that, and they jump on the momentum that they're building right now. And, you know, when you have successful goal scorers, guys start to build. It builds a reputation for your team. We're seeing a couple times now. We've had three players called up to the uh, Southern Professional Hockey League, and you know these three guys are, are probably going to be names that you have circled on your roster sheet as to guys you got to watch out because they will find their way up. But it's it's been a fun tandem between the three of those guys. We're getting ready for opening puck drop here at center ice. It will be Marker going up against Johnny Ruiz. The Danbury Hattrick skating from left to right on your YouTube screen, donning their home black jerseys with orange and white trim. Delaware Thunder wearing their road whites with silver and black. As along the Delaware Thunder bench, it gets chipped in by Phil Brauner and retrieving at the near side circle. And out into the neutral zone it goes. Steve Brown will corral. Good to see Steve Brown healthy again after missing some time with a lower body injury. And he got his first goal of the season up in Elmira on Saturday evening, his first goal since 2017. Yeah, that he did. It's a, it's a huge you know monkey off his back. And the fact that he's skating back here at Danbury Arena the fans are definitely happy to see him. Mean, he's been a longtime Danbury hockey player. Back to the Whaler days, played with the Titans as well. You know, he's one of those guys that you look around the arena, and he's probably the number one guy that you see on the back of fans' jerseys. Faceoff is one on the near side of Gavrick with a shot from the point. Gavrick is playing defense here to start the game, and uh, we talked with Vlad a little bit earlier in the week, Jack and Vlad was up to the challenge. He is naturally a winger, but he's such a big body with such a heavy shot that he's one of those guys that you can throw on defense and not really miss a beat. Yeah, he's such a talented hockey player. He's physical, he's a great two-way forward, if you will, and that's why I think Billy McCreary has no problem dropping him down to the defensive pairing. Looks like he's gonna be out there with Mealy to start this game. You know, Gavrick's gotta fill a huge gap right now because the Hattricks arguably lost their best defenseman this season in Kyle Gonzalez to a call-up. So that's another hole you have to fill right now. And, you know, I think Gavrick's probably the best guy to slide into that role and, and be successful. Puck goes out into the neutral zone. It gets lifted up into the air and over towards the Delaware Thunder net. Karpinski comes out and settles it down for his defense. It goes over to Taylor Cutting. Cutting up the left wing, now maneuvers it over to the right to number eight, Anton Kalinin, who will dump it into the zone. McGuckin thinks about coming out to play. It leaves instead for Matthias Kasich. Kasich escapes out from behind his net and drops it back for Martin Tuma. And Tuma seems to be getting steadier with each passing game as now it's intercepted and shot up into the Chestel area of Tom McGuckin. And he holds as Tom, uh, excuse me, as Martin Tuma will give a healthy little shove to Evan McIntosh. A how do you do as McIntosh was l lurking right by the net. Well, that's a tough mac matchup. <laughs> Evan McIntosh is five foot six. Marty Tuma's six four. I mean, that's a that's towering battle right there. And McIntosh is just trying to see if there's a rebound. Martin Tuma says, "No, sir. Get away from my goaltender." Faceoff will be to the right of McGuckin. Ruiz fighting for it. It is won by the Thunder. Out to the near side, pointy Cristofaro gets it out to the slot. McIntosh at the doorstep is fought off by Aaron Atwell and goes off the skates of Phil Bronner and out into the neutral zone. De Cristofaro will sky it up off of the stick of Johnny Ruiz. Now Bronner crossing the way. Up to Nicola Levesque. Levesque crosses the blue line with Johnny Ruiz right behind him. Levesque maneuvers to his right. Centering pass. Ruiz has it go off his stick and up into the netting and out of play. A minute 48 gone by here in the first period. That's a great look for Levesque. Ruiz in a good scoring opportunity, but it's the active sticks for the Delaware defense that just are in the right place at the right time, protecting that slot area. And that does enough to knock that shot away into the netting there. Faceoff will be to the right of Karpinski. It is won back the Hattrick second line out there of Carter Carrick, Corey Anderson, and Casper Dearson. As Dearson knocks the puck loose, Anderson turns around and fires a shot wide of the net mouth. Shin Carrick will drop it back for Corey Anderson. Anderson will loop it around the perimeter of the board. Steve Brown pinching it at the near side. Brown throws a hard shove to Carnat. And Nat, who is one of the more effective player on the Battle Creek Rumble Bees, the Rumble Bees undergoing a lot of changes right now in the FPHL, Jack. They're off to an 0-15 start to start the year, and uh, sometimes all you need is a change of scenery. Shot, save, and a rebound, they score! Corey Anderson on the rebound! The Hattricks lead it one to nothing. Well, that's just great puck movement in the offensive zone. 
It's Shinkarik, Dearson, and once again, Corey Anderson, Scory Anderson, finds a way to get the puck into the back of the net. Again, another early response for the Danbury Hattricks. They love to score early in the first period here in this building. They do it again here, and it's Anderson to stick on the ice. Keeps it there, off the rebound, the juicy rebound off the netminder, bounces it, and I was just about to say, Casey, that line had so much success. The last time we saw them here against Battle Creek, they were flowing. We saw Shankarik was sitting on a hat trick. He didn't get there, but his opportunities were flowing. Corey Anderson's had a great year all year. They're going to continue to click. That's a dangerous line as well. So Corey Anderson gets the goal on the rebound from the initial shot. That line has been really clicking, like you said, Jack, as hat tricks enter in offsides. Carter Shankarik will get the primary assist. He had the initial shot. And Steve Mealy will get the secondary. So for Corey Anderson, that is his ninth goal of the season. A red hot start for the Manhattanville graduate, who is out there on a line with one of his old Manhattanville classmates, Casper Dearson. Two of them played together and won a uh, conference championship last year with the Valiants. Up the ice now the other way. Here come the Thunder crossing the way. And a good one knee, one hand play by Gordy Bennell. Now up the ice, here comes a newcomer, Nick D. Nicola as his entry stymied, and Di Nicola getting his first shift as a member of the Hattrick. The Walcott native getting a look here for the Hattricks. Yeah, he's a Connecticut native, and you know it's a, it's a big pickup for them because he's from the Southern Professional Hockey League as well. You know, he's, he spent some good time up there. He's a tremendous player in college. He had over 130, I think he had 134 points in college. He, he's an outstanding player, a great addition for this team. Three and a half minutes gone by here in the first period. Long shot by Aaron Atwell gets swallowed up by Karpinski. And we get a stoppage of play. And we have a uh, carrot winner here for our prize here. After the first goal, we have a carrot toss. And closest to center ice wins a cash prize. And we have ourselves a prize tonight that I wish I could be a part of, J uh, Jack. The carrot toss competition at the first intermission for a Nintendo Switch. Yeah, it's 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 pretty great. I, I picked it up this today and... Uh, was thinking about getting one for myself. It was, it was, you know, kind of a buyer's electric atmosphere <laughs> there. Walmart was clicking, and I said, oh, boy, you know, somebody's going home with a Nintendo Switch tonight, early Christmas present. Oh, it's dangerous. You're in there. You get those holiday deals. Mm. I'm trying to get that new Mario Kart, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Entering in and just a little bit off size was number 86, Brennan Young, the Aurora, Ontario native. So we'll do it from the neutral zone. Three minutes, 38 seconds gone by, and Corey Anderson has the lone tally for the Danbury hat tricks. And we've seen a couple of times the Thunder have entered the zone pretty well with some good speed, move the puck well a little bit, but those are the mistakes that they're not going to want to make throughout the course of this game. Simple offsides penalties where Young's coming in with a burst of steam, and he's probably got an option to shoot or pass, but the offside negates that and turns into a faceoff outside. It will be Ruiz out there, and that line has been double shifted a couple times here in the early goings. Billy McCreary going right to the whip and wanting his top line out there for a lot of shifts because they know that the Delaware Thunder like to start games hot, but they don't always finish as strongly. So they really want to apply as much pressure as possible in the early goings of the game as, ooh, McGuckin almost has that roll off of the tip end of his stick and tie him, but he's able to pounce on it. Well, he's had a couple of those this season where you kind of hold your breath when he's playing with the puck with the stick or trying to play the puck with his stick. I think that's, you know, a part of his game that he's going to have to continue to develop as he grows as a hockey player. And, you know, he, I think he's a pretty strong goaltender, good size, really, really good in the back end. He's just got to be careful. As soon as he puts the puck on his stick, he's got to be sharper. Well, he's learning when to play the puck. Yes. That's, that's the biggest thing. When you're a professional, it's a completely different pace of play compared to college or where he was playing last year in Sweden as he snatches that one out of the air with his glove hand. You know, it's, it's a completely different pace, and, and you have players bearing down on you. In the FPHL especially, you have guys that are unafraid of contact. They're going to come barreling towards you. And we've seen McGookin get burned a couple times, but he's been a lot better lately. He's won his last two decisions, his best one coming in relief on Saturday, stopping 32 shots against the enforcers. Yeah, that's a great performance and, and a, a huge confidence boost for him. You know, he, he had that strugglesome game against Elmira. He was able to rebound and, and fight well against Elmira on the road. Here's Dearson now wiring it down low. Between the legs, Shin Carrick shot it just wide. And that started with the shot block by Corey Anderson to get it out into the neutral zone. 
And now picking it up is Marker trying to get around a four checker. He does. He gets it over by the Delaware Thunder bench and takes a hard check from Shinkarik. It's taken away by Anderson. And with Dearson, Anderson's shot goes right into the crest on the stomach of Karpinski's sweater. The Viking at the center of the Delaware Thunder jersey. And he will hold four minutes and 26 seconds gone by in the first. Faceoff will be to the left of Cody Karpinski. Third line out with Nick DiNicola getting his first offensive zone look. And he knocks the stick out of the hands of a Delaware defender. No call. Gets a shot off. Fought off by Karpinski. Rebound loose out to the right post. And steered out of danger by Delaware. Pitch and catch. And off to the races is Kalinin. Kalinin enters in. Wires it towards the net. And it will be easily stopped and held by McGuckin. So Di Nicola with a savvy little move in the offensive zone. He knocks the stick out of the hand. It may, may or may not have gotten away with a slash there. But anything to get a shot off. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you got to find those ways to... Make your statement early as a player. You know, you're brand new. You're trying to show the coach that, you know, you brought me in here for a reason. And it's those little plays that the coaches take note of. And, and I know Billy McCreary's a big fan of that. Shot is a leg pad saved by McGuckin. Goes into the far side midboards. Kendall Bolin Porter will lift it up out of reach of Matias Kasich. And it will go down the length of the ice. It will not be an icing. It did not reach the red line in time as Di Cristofaro and Kasich go into the corner. Pinching in is Ruiz, but unable to hold the zone. Steve Mealy will hold it in the neutral zone. Mealy is in an interesting situation here, Jack, because Mealy is a forward by trade, and that is where he spent last season when he was in the SPHL. And he's played mostly on the blue line, but the few looks that he's gotten at forward, he's kind of been a flex position for the hat tricks, and he's effective no matter where he goes, as here he goes leading the rush on the left wing. He's got Bronner and Ruiz with him, slows up, wires it to Levesque. Levesque with a clean shot to the net, goes off the glass. Rebound out to Levesque, he takes a shove from behind, back to Gavrick at the point. So really, you've got five forwards by trade out on the ice right now for the Hattricks, and Mealy and Gavrick controlling the blue line. Shot redirected just wide into the near side circle. Down low, goes out to the far side circle to Mealy. Gavrick in the high slot. Ruiz to his left, finds him, leaves it back for Levesque in the corner. Has Bronner setting the screen in front. Levesque looking for that pass to the slot, can't connect with Ruiz. Bronner picks it up. Circles around, looks for the backdoor pass. It goes off of the skates of Ruiz. Lively bounce off the end boards is poked out by Kalinin, and the Thunder get a change. Well, there's the pressure. You mentioned, Casey, five natural forwards on the ice, and, you know, that's the pressure that you apply. It's great circling in that top line out there again, getting big minutes, and Johnny Ruiz has been in a couple of scoring opportunities early, and he just hasn't been able to connect. There's been some good defenders around him. They're marking him pretty well. you got to continue to work that puck there because they had good zone time. Just keep firing at the net. And they'll get in another extended shift here as the replacements for that line that got pinned in the zone by Delaware now get forced into an icing. So Mealy and Gavrick will be back out onto the ice to patrol the blue line for the offensive zone chance. Shinkarik, Dearson, and Anderson will complete the five-man unit. Evan McIntosh will take the draw for the Thunder. It's one back over to the side by McIntosh, lifting the stick and getting it to Shinkarik. Gavrick at the near side point, loops it around down low, intended for Anderson. Wonky bounce off the kick plate, and Anderson goes colliding into his own man in Shinkarik. Loses a stick, now gets it back. Puck will pop up and go down the length of the ice, and Mealy will chase. It'll be, oh, no, they will say an icing. One linesman said yes, the other said no. And we'll get a stoppage with 6 minutes 41 seconds gone by in the first. I have to like the way that the Hattricks have started with this game. Delaware, a couple of opportunities early where they're in the attacking zone. Since then, it's been all hat tricks. They're moving the puck well in the attacking zone. They had that opportunity with Anderson. He's had a couple of shots on goal. Not a surprise there. Ruiz has been good. You roll out these three lines for Billy McCreary, you're going to have success. And As we get Bolin Porter and McIntosh will be kicked out of the faceoff dot. Replacing him will be Thomas Municello. As is won by the hat tricks, Kasich with a shot that goes well wide. It goes off. My goodness, that popped up into the air <laughs> high off of the stanchions. Oh, goodness. Uh, the bounces lately on the glass have been very, very uh, in inconsistent, to say the least, as Kasich gets stripped from behind by DeCristofaro, but kept in by Bunnell. Kasich to Bunnell out in front to Mealy. It's stopped by Karpinski. Mealy couldn't get all of it. Oh, that's great movement right at the goal line there, and it's it's the outside pass. Kasich is down there. Bunnell's down there, and then it's Mealy who just too hot for him. He catches it on the heel of his stick and he can't get anything behind it. So it's an easy save to make for Karpinski sliding over to his right. That's great puck movement, especially in that area of the attacking zone. Ryan Marker, the leading scorer for the Delaware Thunder, wins it back and gets it over to Nat on the left wing. Nat trying to, has three hat tricks swarming him. 
Not to use a play on words because he was a member of the Rumble Bees. We he did see him a couple we weekends <laughs> ago. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The Rumble Bees were just here in Danbury two weekends ago. Is now crossing the way to Johnny Ruiz and a blocker save by Karpinski. As Bunnell is taking, excuse me, not Bunnell, that is Kasich that's brought down hard in the corner with no call. And here comes Charlie Penns Jr. who wires it ahead. Captain of the Thunder and the son of Charlie Penn Sr., the head coach of the Thunder squad. Taking it away is Marker, has it on the goal line, harassed from behind by Ruiz. Ruiz gets a stick on it and knocks it over the blue line. A good defensive play by Johnny Ruiz. Here's Marker trying to circle away now from Phil Bronner. Crosses the way over to Di Cristofaro. Up the right wing, he's got Brennan Young. To his left, he's got Cutting. Cutting will swing and weakly tap it into the near side corner and will go off for a change. Replacing him on the ice will be Igor Kostukov. Takes a step in, and his shot goes off of a body. Aaron Atwell will retrieve for the hat tricks. Eight minutes, 15 seconds gone by in the first period. one nothing is your score in favor of the Danbury hat tricks. Here's Phil Bronner. Racing ahead is Thomas Freeman to Freeman. Spinorama try is broken up by Kostukov. And now another pass out in front. They score! Phil Bronner! It's 2 nothing hat tricks! And that's what happens when you go to the good areas of the ice. Phil Bronner, who's so big with his size, just using his body to get positioning there. Puck's rolling a little bit. He just sticks the backhand and, and squeaks it by the netminder, Karpinski. Pretty sure he should have had that one on, on that weak backhand, but Bronner just using his strength, forces his way in there. And again, good puck movement. All starts with that rush in from Tommy Freeman, a defenseman getting involved in the rush, and it creates that opportunity. The defender's kind of scrambling for the Thunder, and the Hattricks double their lead thanks to the man himself, Phil Bronner. So for Phil Bronner, it is his fifth goal of the season, his 16th point. Bro pulls him ahead to third on the team. Carter Shinkarik will get the primary assist on that goal. And Tuma is getting credit for an assist, but I don't believe it should be him. I believe it should be Freeman on the secondary. I mean, we'll get a better look of it, perhaps in the intermission during the replay. But it was a, a great spinner. Those backhanders are often the toughest ones to pick up. You hear goaltenders complain about backhanders all the time. And especially in close, you're not always able to pick it up off of the stick tape. It can be tricky. And it's rolling too, could have some knuckle action and you're just kind of going one way and the next thing you know, it's, it's back the other way. And it just got by Karpinski and you'll take that all day if you're Phil Bronner. He wins our mock carrot toss competition. He gets himself a goal, <laughs> how about that? We must have warmed him up. There you go. There you go. It's, it's that physical activity in the morning that gets you ready for the evening. Faceoff will be out in the neutral zone after the offsides with Ruiz and Anderson. Out in the own zone, now the Thunder looking up the ice and a miscommunication, and this will go for an easy icing. And the Thunder right now aren't connecting right now. The tape-to-tape the -tape passing is not there for the white and silver so far. Yeah, it hasn't been too clean in the neutral zone there for, for Delaware. They need to find a way to just get some passes together. Sometimes that will help you, you know, even if it's in your own zone, work your way up line to line here. I think they're trying to, you know, do too much at one point, simplify the game a little bit, just get the simple passes down, and, and then eventually those tape-to-tape, -tape, two-line, blue-line to blue-line passes will work. Bronner with a sharp angle try that's fought off by Karpinski, who has gotten trial by fire so far in the early goings of the game. 11 shots on goal register, and now here stopping short, and they score! What a shot from the near side. Beats McGuckin down low. That's Eli Kinsman. And the Delaware Thunder are on the board. It's 2-1. to one. Well, Kinsman found a little spot right there. McGuckin off the right post a little bit. Squeezed it right below the blocker. And it's a very good shooter's shot right there. And it's a great way to split this difference right now for the, for the Hattricks, or for the Thunder, I should say. And the fact that they were able to find a way to get inside, you know, that's going to be a huge confidence booster for this team. Well, that's exactly the answer you wanted back because, as I was about to say, the Delaware Thunder have been badly outshot in the first half of the first period here. Shots on goal right now, 11-4 to four now. And two of them have found the back of the net for the Hattricks. One now. For, and, oh, make that three! Matthias Kasich sneaks one through Karpinski! And it's 3-1 to one hat tricks. Oh, happy birthday, Matthias Kasich. Celebrated earlier this week. He was able to find a way to squeak on in, and that's a response goal for the Hattricks. 
Just go right back in the attacking zone and get one right back. Bring up your goaltender. Survive and advance. Good work there for Matthias Kasich. So Matthias Kasich is able to turn around, and I don't know if Karpinski was screened in front, if there was a defensive body shielding the shot, but I mean, Matthias Kasich turned around and smiled and put his finger in the air. I, I think even he was surprised that that found the back of the net. So number 96, Matthias Kasich gets one on the board. We'll have a delayed call going against the Danbury Hattricks as Martin Tuma brought a man down with his stick. So we'll have the first power play of the game. It looks like, I believe, was that Shinkarik and Bolin Porter on the uh, yes, assist yep. there? Mm -hmm. yeah, Announcing the assist, just wanting to make sure because that's, you know, we were so busy talking about the shots <laughs> on goal. It's, you lose it in the, in the play. But nevertheless, it will be a power play opportunity coming up for the Delaware Thunder. Yeah, it's Tuma who's going to the box. Spend a couple of minutes in there for his actions. He got a hook. Yeah, that was that was a, as blatant as they come no. in a hook as, as he brought a man down. So with 9.32 to go in the first period, the Delaware Thunder were able to beat McGuckin once, see if they can do it again. The faceoff will be to the right of McGuckin as we get a little bit of uh, lollygagging here with the officiating crew as they are checking on something over by the Delaware Thunder bench. We want to remind everyone to follow the Danbury Hattricks at Danbury Hattricks on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for exclusive interviews, live game streams, highlights, and more all season long. Well, it's, good, it's good for Mattias Kasich too, Casey. We saw the first couple games, first couple series this season. He was kind of slow out of the gate. And then he just turned it on. I mean, he's been red hot out of late. That's his fifth goal of the season now, nine points overall. Well, that's a great way to celebrate your birthday. I believe it was Wednesday he celebrated, right? Yeah, that's right. It was Mattias Kasich's birthday on Wednesday, and then yesterday it was Aaron Atwell's birthday. Go. So it is birthday season. And speaking of birthdays, we want to bid a very special greetings to one of our team who is watching at home, Zach yes. McGinnis, our usual color commentator, who... He and his wife, Jen, just gave birth to a beautiful baby boy, Patrick Robert McGinnis. We're so happy for you, Zach, and we, uh, we wish you nothing but good health and good fortune going forward. We miss you up here in the booth, and uh, we'll see you again next weekend. But for now, uh, make sure that baby's fed and, and happy, and uh, hopefully he doesn't cry too much. Absolutely, and, and get him fitted for a, for a Hattrick's hockey jersey because <laughs> we're ready to go. And, yeah, congratulations, Zach. We wish you and Jen the best. And, well, that's, that's awesome. A new addition to the family. Yeah. It's incredible. Well, it's, a, it's a big weekend for Zach as well, as he's, he's, his sister is also yeah. getting married this weekend. So it's a big, week, big weekend in the McGinnis household. And he's probably ear to ear with his smile right now uh, if he's listening. So we had our first uh, media timeout here at the Danbury Arena. Ordinarily, you don't get the media timeout right before a penalty taken. Yes, but, I don't uh, know. But, you know, that we have things getting sorted out right now on the bench. It also looks like the officiating crew is having a word with Charlie Penn Sr. over on the Delaware Thunder bench. And Charlie Penn Sr. is one of those guys that he's expected to be a leader. He's got, for one thing, his son who's especially talented on the blue line. But he's facing now a challenge where he's without one of his best players, Brandon Contrato, tonight, serving a two-game suspension from the league. And he's only got Ryan Marker, his leading scorer, and he's 2-10 trying to beat a divisional opponent this weekend. What does Delaware have to do from this point on to fight back, especially with the man advantage coming up? Well, they got to start to find shots, and I think you need to take advantage on this particular power play opportunity, find a way to get those passes clicking, and then start to fire it at the net because that's the best way to do it. And, you, you know, hopefully you broke the ice if you're Delaware by finding that goal right there, and you know, that's the first step in this process for the Thunder to come back in this game is just, just keep firing at the net and hopefully good things will happen. Well, the Delaware Thunder currently sitting in fifth place in the Eastern Conference. In first place in the East right now is Watertown. And Watertown is off to a surging start, but this is a chance here for uh, Danbury to catch up on the Mentor Icebreakers as they're off in Danville with a tough set this weekend. Mentor currently leads the Hattricks by four points in the standings for second place. So 
you don't want to get ahead of yourself here, Jack, but if you get six points here this weekend, you have a very good chance of surpassing and getting into second place. And I think everyone on the Hattricks roster knows that that they're in a prime position to really start surging forward. Absolutely. You, you know the situation. You know who you're up against. You know who everyone else is playing, especially now as the season develops. You start to see which direction each team is trending. You know, Delaware still trying to figure themselves out. And you have the, the powerhouses, Watertown, Carolina, Mentors having a great season. Danbury's right in the thick of it, though. You know, they have a great opportunity here, I think, to take six points. They had a great sweep a couple of weekends ago against Battle Creek. That started this five-game win streak that they're on right now. Those are great games to build on. You want to take those six points. You want to move forward, find a way to win on Saturday. They did that. They found a way to win on Wednesday against Elmira. Quick turnaround after Thanksgiving, won back-to-back -back games. A really, really good showing for them. And, and, you know, you have a great opportunity here. Take six more points. We have a starting, it looks like the ice over by the Delaware Thunder bench has a divot in it that they are trying to replace. So we want to thank everyone for tuning in on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. And be sure to watch our new episode of Rabbit Season, which was posted earlier this morning. And you can find that on Facebook and Twitter where we tested the accuracy of the arms of Nick Levesque and Phil Bronner. And Phil Bronner wanted to channel his inner Tom Brady. He is a Wilbraham, Massachusetts native. So he wanted to get a little TB12 action. He shouted out the GOAT, uh, alleged, quote unquote, of course, my being a New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, listen, my team never struggled with Tom in, in the Super Bowl, so Tom's all right by me. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I'm fine. You want to call him the GOAT? Six Super Bowl rings. You can't knock down that. He's an outstanding, if, uh, it's those probably two, the greatest of all time. It's those two losses, though, to, uh, to the New York Giants that yep. I'm totally okay with. I, I sleep well at night knowing that. <laughs> I do, too. So while we have a stoppage here, we want to thank everyone for tuning in, and be sure to sign up if you haven't already for our Teacher Appreciation Night tomorrow, if there are any educators giving us a listen on danburyhattricks.com slash teachers. You can give us a look, and all teachers will get a complimentary ticket to tomorrow night's game, plus a pregame party at Buffalo Wild Wings. You will get a complimentary non-alcoholic beverage and an order of wings from Buffalo Wild Wings. You come on down to Danbury Arena, and you can get any beverage of your choice from the Rabbit Hole, our newly renovated concession stand, and one of the many new additions that looks better by the day, Jack, because they always keep adding to it, and things look great out there in the concourse. Absolutely. You know, there's been so much effort and energy put into this building in terms of making it the best it can be in terms of a, you know, full proposal of a, of a you know, recreational and entertainment venue. The arcades are going to go in here. I mean, they're going all out in this thing. It's, it's, it's really incredible what has already gone into, and you're right, the Rabbit Hole is a fantastic venue, great place to... You know, watch the hat tricks on the road. On the road games, obviously, you want to hang out with some great hat tricks fans. You can go there. They have games on all the time. It's it's a really great place to hang out. You know, in the, during the intermissions. You know, before the game, after the game. And I'm sure we'll get a shot of it later on tonight. But as the the racing crew, it looks like the Zamboni crew is making their way off the ice, drills in hand, and we might be ready for some hockey. So 9.32 to go because this is a reminder that you are watching a hockey game. <laughs> Don't be too confused. You're not just watching a static image of center ice here at Danbury Arena. As here we go. It looks like Evgeny Demin will be taking the face-off draw for the Delaware Thunder. He's got Weng To to his left and Anton Kalinin to his right. Marker and Penns Jr. will complete the five-man power play unit. Two minutes for hooking is the penalty to Martin Tuma, and away we go as an errant pass goes past Ryan Marker, and Phil Bronner will force it ahead. Bronner will give chase as he squares up, fakes a hit on Karpinski. Bronner does have a shorty so far this season with the Danbury Hattricks. Atwell will dump it in deep, and the Delaware Thunder will have to go the full 200 as Charlie Penns will hold. He's got Marker to his right, Demine to his left. Demin will drop it back to Penns Jr., with nine minutes to go in the first period, up to the right wing to toe. Back to retrieve is McGuckin. He'll saucer it out to the left wing, taking a swing and getting it across the blue line is Atwell. And Shinkara can rush in for a chance here if he hurries. Drops it back to Di Nicola. Di Nicola squares the body away. Shinkara will race off for a change. A quick shift for Carter Shinkara as he very nearly had himself a breakaway opportunity. 
Here's Marker on the right wing for the Thunder, crossing the way to Toe. Enters in on Steve Brown. Brown forces him to spin around, throws a hard check, knocks another man down in Anton Kalinin. It's taken away by the Antrix and cleared down the length of the ice. Yeah, great kill so far when you get your penalty killers into the attacking zone on the penalty kill. You know you're doing the right things. And, you know, I've seen a couple of good shifts so far from Nick DeCola in his hat tricks debut. I think he, he had a couple of good shifts there. And Shinkarik, I mean, he's been on the stat sheet three times, three primary assists. Well, Carter Shinkarik is one of the best additions that the hat tricks have made. He came over from Evansville in the SPHL. And I, you wonder if his number will be called again. As here's Bolin Porter breaking in, shot just wide. Kendall Bullen Porter, who himself has a shorthanded goal. One of two for the hat tricks this season. Bronner having the other one, as aforementioned. 15 seconds to go on the power play. As here's Bronner entering in. Bronner, spinorama move, backhander. That's stopped by Karpinski. And a whoa from the crowd as the hat tricks faithful. We're all impressed by that move by Bronner. More scoring chances for the hat tricks this power play than the Thunder. Yeah, who is on the power play, you should say, and it's it's impressive what the Hattricks are doing. It's almost like they like the open space. It's the four-man unit. It's kind of worked their way around, and it's Bronner again. Who, you know Bronner for his size and his grit, but, I mean, he, he's producing this season. He's having a really, really good year. Absolutely. Five seconds to go on the power play as here's Bronner between the hash marks. His shot is gloved down by Karpinski, and that will do it for the power play as Martin Tuma will be... Rejoining the action, it looks like. Yeah, as Martin Tuma comes out and goes right over to the offensive zone as Ruiz, Bronner, and Levesque will stay out there. McIntosh taking the draw for the Thunder. Freeman and Tuma completing the five-man unit for the hat tricks. Ruiz gets it back to Freeman. Crossing the way to Tuma, fresh out of the box. Long shot, swallowed up by Karpinski. So a couple of clear sight shots, and Karpinski starting to get a feel for the puck. Yeah, those are much easier to make, and it's building your confidence as a goaltender when you have those clear lanes where you can see the puck the whole way through. You're going to jump on those ones and, and make those stops. Another offensive draw, zone draw for the Hattricks. They lead 3-1 to one with a 7.28 to go in the first period. Tuma pinches in, gets it towards the net, paddled aside by Karpinski. Ruiz is checked from behind by Marker. Marker swipes at it and knocks it into the near side midboards, flipping it up into the air and into the Delaware Thunder bench was Penns Jr. And it looks like we'll have another offensive zone draw as they'll say that it was lifted up clean from the Thunder. And the Hattricks get yet another zone draw in the offensive zone. Yeah, they continue to apply the pressure. And that's one thing I think the Hattricks have adjusted to since the first couple of weekends is keep applying the pressure, foot on the gas pedal all the way through. You get a lead, sometimes you like to sit back a little bit, take the foot off, and you know sometimes you know better teams will take care of that and, and make you pay, and you don't want that to happen tonight. Here's Dearson looking for Anderson across the way. Can't connect with him, but you know, I was I was marveling at this the other day, just how many different players there are on the Hattricks roster compared to opening night. As here's Marker speeding ahead, gets around Atwell, who is one of those new faces on the blue line. Gets it over to Anderson and Dearson, who's another addition on the right wing. I mean, the Hattricks have made so many additions to make them such a deeper team. They're, they can now roll three lines and three pairs of defense, all of them capable of scoring. As here's Anderson leaving it behind for Shinkarik. Shinkarik now leaves it for Dearson. The Hattricks playing the cycle game, gets it back to Anderson. Shinkarik in the slot, has it on his backhand, turns around, glides over to the left side circle, shot redirected wide. Here's Anderson, spins away from Penns. Shinkarik leaves it back for Anderson in the far side corner. Whirls it around to the other side. Here's Shinkarik, feeds Dearson, can't get the full mustard of his weight behind the shot. To the far side circle, it will be finally kissed off the glass and out of the zone and shrugging at his bench was Eric Masters as he tries to get some form of communication going with Delaware as right now it's been a very passive defensive scheme for Delaware. They're really letting Danbury impose their will in the cycle game. Yeah, there's a lot a lot of longer shifts for the Delaware defensive unit. So when they get out of the zone, they just go straight to the bench. They can't get anything going down the other end of the ice. And unfortunately for them, they got to find a way like those where they just catch good bounces and force their way back the other way. Colleen and kicks it to himself, trying to get around the big body of Gavrick. And that's exactly why the coach Billy McCreary wanted Gavrick on the blue line to shield the puck away with his six foot four frame. Here's Kalinin once more from the far side circle. Redirected, they score! Anton Kalinin, it went off of a hat trick stick. And to the back of the net, it's 3-2. to two. 
That's exactly what you need to do. Colleen in there, he had a little bit of space in front of him. So he takes his time here, lines up the wrister, and it does take a deflection on its way in. McGuckin's down, expecting the puck low. Deflects up into the top shelf. There's nothing he can do about that one. And just like that, in a game where the hat tricks feel like they've got control the whole time, it's a one-goal game once again. So the Delaware Thunder answer back. They have been opportunistic. They've scored twice on five shots on goal. For those playing at home, that's a 40% shooting percentage. That would be good from three-point land in the NBA. Yeah. So 5-16 to go in the first period, and we still have ourselves a hockey game. We'll have a cross check going against Martin Tuma. So another power play opportunity. So Delaware, who looked down and out the entire period, now has a chance to pull even at three if they're able to strike on the man advantage, though their last power play was not so hot. Yeah, it wasn't. It was more of a Danbury using that time to just kind of coast in the attacking zone. Got to get the puck possession first. That's your number one goal right here is to work and establish possession in the attacking zone for Delaware. Here's Atwell trying to get it out of the zone. We'll have another delayed call as Atwell was brought down to the ground and it will be a hook going against the Delaware Thunder. So, so much for that. Wang To will be shown to the penalty box as we are back to even. It will be four on four. So, so much for the power play for Delaware. Yeah, that's not what you want. When you're down by one, you want to get back to, into this game. You've had a couple of nice shots that go your way. Hey, you're down by a goal here. You have an opportunity to maybe tie things up here 3-3 three, three in the first, in a long first period. But you shoot yourself in the foot and go to the box, and now it's five on or four on four. I beg your pardon. Shin Carrick against Marker in the faceoff dot to the right of Karpinski. Shin Carrick wins it back to Phil Bronner. Pinching in is Steve Mealy. Has it in his skates. Spins away from a four-checker. Gets it out to the high slot. It's taken by DeCristofaro. Has Marker to his right, Demean to his left. Banks it off the boards, gets it up to Demean, who carries it in on his backhand, taken away by Bronner, and up the ice, two on one, developing. Here's Mealy in with Shinkarik. Mealy to the net, rang it off the pipe! Oh, it caught the corner! Mealy inches away from finding the back of the net. Yeah, he had no problem taking that shot. It's the classic two on one. Do you pass, do you shoot? He was given enough space in defense, and he says, fine, I'll just rip it. And Mealy has the puck at the far side midboards. Now it's to the high slot. Ruiz taking a step in. Ruiz dances, fires, and shots swallowed up by Karpinski. It's a great play by Ruiz coming in. in. He gets that one little deep move to the outside. And I thought he'd try to go up higher with his shot. He just couldn't get it off of his stick blade enough. And it was an easier save for Karpinski. And that shot goes wide of the net. Here's Ruiz leaving it for Levesque. 50 seconds to go in the four on four before Martin Tuma comes out for a brief 10 second power play for the hat tricks. A pair of number twos in the penalty box right now in Tuma and Toe. Here's Levesque, has Ruiz out in front if they can find him. He's got two thunder around him. Levesque spinning away from a couple of checks and now Levesque is brought down by the hard hip check of Taylor Cutting. Ruiz has possession, loses the handle on it, and is forced out into the neutral zone by Kieran Devine. Good play by Devine. And now streaking in is McIntosh. McIntosh in one-on-one -on -one to McGuckin. His shot save, rebound try is pounced on by McGuckin. And McIntosh had himself a couple of looks. Good job by McGuckin to close the five hole. Yeah, that all starts from the great play there by Kieran Devine, who just works on Ruiz, works on him, works on him, works on him, forces him to make an ill-advised back pass Intercept in the neutral zone. Delaware has a little space, a little room to run. Their shot stopped there by McGuckin, and he was able to fall on the rebound before any further damage. Here's Kendall Bull and Porter taking the draw against Marker. Bull and Porter wins it. Mealy takes a hard check from behind from Masters. And now up the left wingers, Bull and Porter in with speed. He's got Gordy Benell to his right. Bull and Porter getting around the defense, trying to shove home a backhander. It's paddle save by Karpinski. Here's Bunnell getting it once more, trying to drag the toe and get around to Cristofaro. One man is out of the box. It will be a brief power play for the Danbury Hattricks. Very brief, as it's only seconds. And just as quickly as it arrived, it vanishes. As we're back to five on five for the Danbury Hattricks. Three minutes to go in the first period. Three to two is your score in favor of the Hattricks. 
You're watching Danbury Hendricks Hockey on the Danbury Hendricks YouTube channel. Casey Bryant alongside Jack O'Mara. Puck gets wired out towards the hat tricks end line, and it will be Steve Mealy winning the foot race for the icing. And we'll have an offensive zone draw for the hat tricks. And, and we've said it all period long, Jack. The hat tricks have dominated in the possession game, but still find themselves only leading by one. I'm sure that's something that head coach Billy McCreary will want to focus on going forward, making your chances count. Yes, absolutely. You have to continue to roll. What you have, what you're doing is correct. What you're doing is right. You just have to continue to keep your foot on the gas pedal and not let anything behind you defensively. I think they've gotten a little soft defensively, and uh, Delaware's found some creases where they've been able to make some good chances. Atwell springs Deerson. No look pass is intercepted by Marker. A little bit of a miscommunication there for the hat tricks. Here's Masters maneuvering to his right. Fans on the shot, takes a check from behind from Shinkarik. Now Marker wants more behind the end line. Has Brown pursuing him, gets it out to cutting, and a defensive stick by Deerson prevented the shot on goal. 2.15 to go. Spring pass now for Deerson. Deerson in one-on-one, -on -one, has a man across the way, and Shinkarik can't find him. He's brought down from behind. Good defensive play by Devine. And we'll get a whistle as Kieran Devine had his stick tied up in the legs of Deerson, and that jammed the communication lines ever so briefly, enough to force him wide. And it's a tough break there for uh, Deerson. He just couldn't get the puck on his stick. He kept trying to kick it to himself, but it just would not work, and by then the defense was able to swarm him and turn that chance into nothing. Face-off is won by Delaware to Cristofaro trying to get it up the left wing. Now taken away by Mealy. Maneuvers now across the way to Levesque. Oh, just wide. Oh, Levesque put his arms up in the air. He wants to know how that didn't find Twine. He had himself a yawning net mouth. And he paused there for a moment. It's like he didn't know how to move. Like he just took it in for a second. Well, it did hit the netting. I, it must have hit the side of the net. He just missed. But the net moved, and I think that's why he originally put his hands up as some fans. Must have caught the also, outside. Yeah. They also reacted the same way. I was looking for the shot myself. I lost sight of it. I didn't yeah. hear iron. I didn't see even really see it go off the glass. And I saw the net, like you said, it froze me for a second. I think it froze everyone in the building. Yeah. It's one of those shots where you, you have that wide open opportunity. Levesque, who's usually, you know, automatic in those spots, just misses, and you kind of say, oh, how did that not go in? <laughs> Devine pitch forks it ahead from the far side point. A hard check by Brown on Kinsman brings a man down. Steve Brown has really been throwing his weight around so far in the early goings of the game. 1.20 to go in the first period. Kasich enters in. Kasich looks to the net. That goes up into the cage of Karpinski. And a lot of shots just hitting Karpinski in the middle of his body right now, and it's giving Karpinski a feel for it. If you're able to shoot low or perhaps try to pick a corner on Karpinski, he's been fallible so far. Yeah, that's what we saw on the first goal, the rebound for Anderson. You're picking the corners, it's a little bit better. That's actually a very tough shot, Casey, because uh, Anderson, he shot that through the legs. Or I beg your pardon, he shot that through the legs of the defender in front. Right. So he didn't see it right away, and the next thing you know, it's in his cage. And he doesn't have one of those dangling neck protectors nope. either, so he's lucky it doesn't catch him underneath the uh, the chin there. If you're looking the wrong way, it could catch you. Even if you have the neck protectors, you can either catch a stick or yep. a puck in there. Yep. That's what uh, forced Henrik Lundqvist out with so much time and caused the rise of Cam Talbot, who is now succeeding as the goaltender for the Calgary Flames. Here's Nick DiNicola. In on the right side, gets away from a forecheck, crossing the way to Aaron Atwell, who enters in. Atwell looking for the redirection by Anderson. He got a stick on it, but well too high. Well, that's the right idea, top to bottom movement, and I thought Atwell's played a pretty good game so far. He just fires that one low enough, and Anderson just comes across again in that slot area, right in front of that crease. There's just too many sticks in the way, causes the deflection up into the netting. Right place, right time sometimes. Corey yep. Anderson was right there in the right place and the blue paint and he got a stick on it. Just wasn't angled perfectly. And it's, it becomes a game of geometry when you're in down low. Mm -hmm. Pursuing is DiNicola and ooh, taking a puck to the face was Carnett. Now crossing the way, entering in is Atwell. Shot is blocked in front and that one hit Anderson and bodies are strewn across the middle of the ice. But now picking it up is Marker. Marker in with Nat, cuts to his right, shot blocked by the stick of Steve Brown. Into the near side corner, it's picked up by Atwell. Backhander up to DiNicola. Anderson entering in. Anderson gets it over to his right. Looking for Ruiz in the slot. Ruiz with a look to the net. Weak shot is paddled aside by Karpinski. 20 seconds to go in the period. 
Here's Ruiz. Leaving it for Anderson, cycling it down low. Ruiz doesn't have a man in the slot as Bronner is coming over the boards for a change. It'll be taken away by DeCristofaro. He's got toe to his left. Five seconds to go in the first period. One last chance for the Thunder as Marker with a blind shot from the far side corner. Two seconds and one. That will do it for the first period. An eventful first period as the Danbury Hattricks, according to our stat keepers, have 20 shots on goal to the Delaware Thunders. Eight. And boy, oh boy, you wonder how the Danbury Hattricks are not leading by more as the Delaware Thunder really were opportunistic in that first period. Yeah, they took advantage of, of the slight mistakes that the Hattricks had. The first one, McGuckin just a little bit too far off his post. A nice shot on the inside uh, by, the, by the shooter. And then, of course, the second goal is just an awkward deflection that kind of bites you. You know, you want to get in front of the shots. He makes the deflection, and it just goes to the back of the net. And Anton Kalainen, it was a fantastic shot there for him as well. So, you know, they did the right things for Delaware, just taking advantage when they needed to. They made a game that seems super lopsided turn into, you know, a game where it's much more manageable for them going to the locker room. So we have ourselves the first intermission coming up here for the Danbury Hat Tricks. As we'll rejoin you in a moment here, you're watching the Danbury Hat Tricks YouTube channel. J Casey Bryant alongside Jack O'Mara. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for live coverage of the Danbury Hattricks hockey team here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Casey Bryant alongside Jack O'Mara bringing you exclusive live coverage of the Danbury Hattricks tonight and all season long as the Danbury Hattricks take a 3-2 lead into the second period against the Delaware Thunder, their first meeting between two expansion franchises, and it's been a while since a team from Delaware played a team from Danbury in a league like this, in a professional setting. So it's been many, many years, and it's been many years since Danbury had a team period. Of course, since the Danbury Titans, the most recent team, last played in 2016-17, and really going back to the Delaware Federals, were the last team to play the Danbury Whalers way back in the early 2010s in the early stages of the Federal Prospects Hockey League back when well, really neither team was really fully established. The Federal Prospects Hockey League itself was not really fully established. So a far cry from those uh, early days of the FBHL. We're back here at Danbury Arena. And so far for the first period, shots on goal were 20-8 to eight in the first period in favor of the Danbury Hat Tricks. And even though those eight shots may seem paltry in comparison to the, Del to, excuse me, to the Danbury Hat Tricks total, the Delaware Thunder made it count with Eli Kinsman and Anton Kalinin finding the back of the net. And Jack, the Delaware Thunder really did their best to make each individual shot attempt count. What will the Danbury Hattricks have to do defensively to tighten up here in the second? Well, I think that's just it. They need to just tighten their defensive shifts up. I saw a couple of times guys would get on pucks. That I, that's what I think they need to do right now is to just jump on pucks. Loose pucks is important in the defensive zone. If you can get on those and turn them back the other way, that's how they're going to be successful. No, they will need to uh, certainly protect the front of the net a little bit better as there were a couple of redirections that resulted in Thunder goals. It wasn't necessarily clean. Well, one clean shot from the near side circle is here's Levesque entering in, and he's stripped from behind. A great play by Daniel DeCristofaro, the Brampton, Ontario native. And the uh, Hatcher said the Delaware Thunder's second goal was off of a redirection, as there's a redirection off the stick of Ruiz that hits off the side of the net. So for both sides, a lot of traffic in between the shooter and the goaltender that's been causing problems for both Karpinski and McGuckin. Yeah, absolutely. And it's been successful on both ends. You know, you've seen Ruiz in those areas. He's been close a couple of times. A couple of times the Hattricks have had pucks rattle off the iron. And then on the other side of things, it's, it's connected for Delaware. And they've had a, a lot of success in that department as well. Puck will be played out of play as we're just about a minute into the second period. And head coach Billy McCreary, I wanted to mention it earlier, Jack, is that Billy McCreary has himself a new fedora on his head. Uh, that being the fedora that was of his late grandfather, mm -hmm. Bill McCreary. Wore it back in the days of the Memorial Cup up in Canada and wore it all the way to the NHL where he was a founding member of the St. Louis Blues. And we lost Bill McCreary last week, uh, a terrible loss for the hockey community. And all of us here in Danbury wish the McCreary family nothing but love and the best going forward as uh, Bill McCreary is no longer with us. As Anderson plays it out towards the middle of the ice, Dearson couldn't get a stick on it. It was played away by Demean. And now here's a breakaway opportunity coming the other way, crossing the way, and one, oh, excuse me, fought off by McGuckin. Demean with a trailing shot and a hard check in the near side corner. Kalinin. That's just one too many passes there, Mike, Casey. I was stunned they didn't shoot that. That's a three on O. Oh, the second guy should shoot that. Never pass it back. If you have that opportunity, take that shot and bury it. And Tom McGuckin, a sharp save for him, one of his better saves all season, just to hang in there. Deep in his crease, fight off that final passer who fires it home. Corey Anderson ends up taking a penalty on the play, but you'll take that over a goal and a really good stop there for Tom McGuckin. So a power play opportunity for the Delaware Thunder, their third power play opportunity of the game. They're 0 for 2 as Anderson on the hard check on Anton Kalinin will be called for a boarding. And it was the trailing shot by Evgeny Demin. I mean, we talk about how when you have those opportunities to cross Royal Road, that middle of the ice between the hash marks in front of the net, if you're able to cross it once, you exponentially increase your chances of scoring. Cross it twice, and you have, according to most studies, a 67% chance of burying it. But, I mean, you've got a 3-on-0 on McGuckin. You already had a good pass as that shot goes into the rabbit on the center of his sweater. I, I find it hard to believe that Eric Masters couldn't pull the trigger on that. He's got, I mean, in that situation, at this point in the game, 
you know, you're not trying to help a teammate out, get his stats up, or help this team, you know, cruise a little bit. You need a goal. Take the shot. Take Especially the shot in that since situation. Yeah. McGuckin hadn't gone fully from the near side post to the far side post. So you're putting his body in a better position. He ha doesn't have to go the full post to post motion. He only has to go a couple of feet now to square up to the shot in the center. Anyway, onto this shift as Charlie Penn's shot goes into the midsection of Marty Tuma out in front of the net. Fighting for it and getting it over to the left side is Anton Kalinin. As it gets sent out into the neutral zone and back to retrieve will be Cody Karpinski. Up the ice is Penns Jr. Has marker to his right, finds him. Demean across the way on the left wing. With Colleen and crashing the net, that shot, sharp angle try. That was deflected and will go out into the neutral zone. Giving chase is Di Nicola. Di Nicola, who has his family here in attendance tonight, the Walcott native. It's a short drive for them. They only have to come about, what, 50 minutes uh, across yeah, the line? Yeah, about, about. I'm not an expert in Connecticut <laughs> geography yet. <laughs> or geography, period, for that matter. As the puck gets deflected into the Hattricks and Thomas Freeman, swinging and missing, Colleen and takes it away on the right wing. Has a body setting up a screen in front and Taylor cutting. Kalinin trying to get it across the goal line is forced wide. Cutting still planting himself in front. Demean is across at the near side circle if they can find him. Here's Aaron Atwell taking it and lifting it up into the air, trying to spring Kendall Bullen Porter. Gets around the defense. Bullen Porter has it knocked away from him by the stick of Demean. A good back check by Evgeny Demean. Charlie Penns brings down Di Nicola behind the play. And Kendall Bullen Porter nearly had himself a shorthanded breakaway with 15 seconds to go here in the power play. Marker with a look to the net, crossing the way. Here's a shot attempt, they score! Taylor cutting, buries one. We're tied at three. Yeah, that's the find right there. A nice cross crease pass and cutting, I think, who's played a very good game on the defensive end. Just finds that open ice right there. Takes it on a stick and rips it top shelf. And McGuckin, it's, it's tough facing those shots, and that's why you gotta take advantage of those power play opportunities. Danbury hasn't had one yet. They had those 10 seconds after Tuma came out of the box. Delaware's had a couple of opportunities. Now they finally found a way to cash in on a very good penalty kill in terms of Danbury's standpoint. I mean, they did everything to kill off that one minute, 51 seconds. They couldn't finish the nine. Mealy with a trailing shot goes off the backhanded catching glove of Cody Karpinski and up into the netting. Well, it will be Taylor cutting from Ryan Marker for cutting it is his first goal of the season in this his sixth game with the Delaware Thunder. So Taylor cutting finding the back of the net. Cutting has now two points in his six games and perhaps more impressively has 50 penalty minutes in this his sixth game. <laughs> That's impressive. You're averaging 10 a game. Yeah. Well, he's, he's got some work to do to keep up that pace here tonight. As here's Mealy trying to chop it over to Deerson. It's taken away by Kinsman. Kinsman up the center of the ice. Leads it over to the left side to Brennan Young. Young has Gavrick in front of him. Young gets a wrist shot off. That's gloved and held by McGuckin. And well, now tr pulling the trigger a bit more is Delaware. Well, it's response time here for your Danbury. You're up 3-1 in this game. You're up 2 to nothing in this game. So that's two two-goal leads. And Delaware's found a way to get back into this thing while almost you know, shooting only half as much as Danbury has. It's it's been a again one-sided period, I thought in that in that first. But they did enough to just get those two goals on the board. They've come out. They've had a sharp way to start this period, and getting that power play goal, I think, is is a great boost for them. And they're probably feeling pretty good about themselves, saying, "Hey, we're hanging in with this team right now." And if you're Danbury, you got to say, "How can we respond here? How can we get ourselves back into the lead?" And we were speaking with some Delaware staff members earlier who were saying, as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, you know, Delaware often gets out to some hot starts and struggles in that final 20 minutes, especially now they'll have the long change in the 20 minutes and the third period here on the road. So it, it's good for them to really bring it back to even here in the early goings of the second period as now here's a lead pass for Levesque. Levesque on the breakaway, wrist shot, stoned cold by Karpinski. Karpinski flashes some leather and stops Levesque on the breakaway. Here's Bronner with another look. Back pass intended for Ruiz. Turnaround shot kicked out by Karpinski. Levesque has it in his skates. Spins around. Four minutes 45 gone by. Feeds it out to Ruiz, has it knocked off his stick. And the Delaware Thunder are able to escape thanks to a pair of brilliant saves by Cody Karpinski as a backhand try is forced wide. A let's go hat tricks chant up from the crowd here at Danbury Arena. 
A couple of really nice saves there. I mean, Karpinski, he's had a really good start to this period. Obviously, when you have Nikola Levesque barreling down on you, who's had some great success this season, stone him, and then Ruiz with a nice little turnaround shot, and he just kicks out that right pad. A couple of really huge saves, and then it was Penns who forced the turnover and got the clear. Really good stuff from Delaware on the back end. And that's another one where we were looking at, you know, perhaps, you know, are you able to pull the trigger? Or are you not able to pull the trigger? Phil Bronner had a clean look to the net that he elected to back pass, but here's Bolin Porter on the backhander. It rolls off of his stick. Here's another try from the far side point by Freeman that's snared out of the air by Karpinski and Cody Karpinski showing why he belongs on the Delaware Thunder. His first game was just recently added to the roster this week and already has himself an impressive showing here in the early goings of the game. Yeah, that's the, the response you want, the, the audition you want for this team is to come in there and stand strong. And yes, Hattrick's got off to a really good start, but since then, I mean, he's been stone cold in between the pipes. Mealy forced down to the ground as Bolin Porter evades a check. Mealy in deep. Back at his position at the blue line is Gordy Bennell. Kasich trying to dig it out. And a good job here by Patrick Tondal to win it away, but here's a shot from Bolin Porter that's kicked out with the right leg pad by Karpinski. Now back the other way comes Kinsman entering in. Wrist shot is shanked well wide. Here's Kasich taking a swing at it, and we'll get it down the length of the ice. This one will go for an icing as Tondal is back to retrieve. Well, we talk about Cody Karpinski. He comes in as one of the more accomplished goalies in this league. He was a stellar player at Lindenwood University mm -hmm. over in the ACHA. Finished his senior season with a 927 save percentage and a 2.11 goals against average. He was one of the most solid goaltenders in the ACHA in college, and he came to Watertown and immediately made an impact. Yeah, that, that's a testament too of Lindenwood's program. You look at those numbers, they're, they're in the top five of the ACHA year in and year out. And You know, Karpinski, you show up to Watertown and you know that's a great pickup for yourself because you look how successful they are this season. They're top of the division right now. Yeah. They're having a great year, and you know he's got an opportunity now to lead the charge with Delaware and, and, and you know make a name for himself here and you know continue his strong goaltending, lead this team to more victories. Well, that is the thing is that Watertown will automatically put you in a great position to succeed. They are a recent FPHL championship from 2018, and uh, they are consistently among the top players in the FPHL as. A shot attempt from Karndeep Nat is blocked by Steve Brown and gloved it down by cutting. I mean, it's now in an opportunity where now he has to create himself the chance to win. He has to keep the Delaware Thunder in the game because the Delaware Thunder at this stage of the game is not the Watertown Wolves. You know, Delaware Thunder come into the game 2-10. and ten. They're an expansion franchise. They're still trying to find an identity. And Karpinski, it would appear, is going to be a major part of that. Entering in is cutting on the right wing. Cutting, looks to the net, blocker saved by McGuckin, pops up into the air. It's inadvertently sticked down by Dearson. A turnaround shot by Nat is blocked. Here's Marker with the wraparound try on the near side post. Getting a glove on it was McGuckin. Behind the net it goes once more. Here's Nat giving chase. Nat, another guy who's going to be relied on to establish an ide identity as he's starting out on the top line in his first game here in Delaware. Here's Shin Carrick with a wrist shot, pops up into the air, sitting in the blue paint, swiping at it, Dearson, and diving for it and not covering it is Karpinski. It will be steered aside by Eric Masters. Yeah, we've seen those pucks bounce a little bit off the shoulders of Karpinski. You saw that a couple of times now in this game, and he kind of holds your breath there as the puck's bouncing up in the air that time. The Delaware defense does a good job of just clearing it from the blue paint. And it's this guy right here, I think, Charlie Penns, who's making a difference on the back end right now, and that's turning things around to the offensive game. Wrist shot from Levesque at the far side. A bad angle goes into the near side corner. Retrieving is Kalinin. Kalinin doing battle with Bronner. Puck squibs out across the way. Levesque giving chase, but it will be one away by Wang To. And now a redirection in front by Bronner, and getting a belly on it was Cody Karpinski. And now here's some extracurriculars, as here's Bronner dropping his stick with Kieran Devine. And Bronner will be pulled away from Devine before any further activity commences. Bronner has himself two fights in his last three games here in Danbury Arena. He is not one to shy away from conflict. No, and I think he wanted to go too, and Devine says, hey, let's just play hockey here. That was a good little jostle here. Let's just keep our gloves on and keep things civil, or as civil as can be up to this point. And Bronner, I think he was shaking his head saying, come on, man, let's get ready to go here. Here's Levesque 
Spinning away from a check for Divine, and that is rare that like you get two players going at each other in Bronner and Divine, and they stay out for yep. the next shift because they're both such important players to their respective rosters. Here's Levesque on the goal line, cutting out. Shot save, Karpinski, rebound off the side of the net. Johnny Ruiz got a piece of it. Here's Phil Bronner, turn around, trying to pass it out to Levesque in the slot, can't connect, and it goes out into the neutral zone. Tuma crosses the way to Bronner. Ruiz goes off for a change. Bull and Porter will replace. Bronner enters in off sides and will do it from the neutral zone. Eight minutes, 42 seconds gone by in the second period. We're tied at three. Well, that's the push that the Hattricks need. To start to get more zone time there. A couple of good chances. Karpinski, again, as sharp as can be. But it's that top line that I think needs to make this difference right now because this is a closer game that I think the Hattricks were thinking they were going to be in. At, especially halfway through that third period when things started to look like they had all the control. You got to find a way to get those top guys scoring again. You got to find a way to get the puck in the back of the net. Puck careens off of the skates of Masters. Takes a hard check from behind by Bolin Porter. And Kendall Bolin Porter loves to throw his weight around Jack. He is not the biggest player on this Hattricks team, but if he comes at you full steam, you're going to feel it. Oh, yeah. He, he's a gritty guy. He's that third line centerman for this side and he's had a really good start I think to his Hattrick's career just one of those guys that you rely on to just win some draws get into those dirty areas make some plays for your team and, and you know just be a hard-working player a high motor on this guy and he's a he's a really good third line centerman for for Billy McCreary in this Hattrick side he's got five points in his first nine games with the team and he's got himself a shorthanded goal and the primary assist on the other shorthanded goal scored by the Hattrick, scored by Phil Bronner. So, I mean, he's been a key part of this organization since arriving, especially defensively. Here's De Cristofaro, who will shovel it ahead into the end boards. Here's Atwell picking it up for the Hattrick. He's being hampered from behind by Marker. Marker gets a stick tied up in his legs and brings Atwell down to the ice. Nine and a half minutes gone by here in the second period. We're tied at three as McGuckin We'll cover it up with his glove hand. You're watching Danbury Hattricks Hockey on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Casey Bryant alongside Jack O'Mara. A reminder to follow the Danbury Hattricks at Danbury Hattricks on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and YouTube. Subscribe across all channels for exclusive live content, interviews, highlights, and more. Face off will be to McGuckin's left in the near side circle dot on your screen. It will be Demine going up against Shin Karik, and Shin Karik wins it back to Vladislav Gavrik. Gavrik takes a check from Demine, a good job by Demine to get the center of gravity advantage on Gavrik as a pass gets redirected up into the midsection of Pens. But now here come the Hattricks in transition. Anderson entering in with Shin Karik. Anderson looking to the net, redirected wide. Here's Dearson, turnaround shot, fought off by Karpinski, picked up by Anderson. Behind the net, Shinkarik is setting the screen in front. The shot attempt is shoulder to side by Karpinski, and Karpinski gives a glare towards the linesman as Shinkarik was right on top of him. But now here comes two the other way. Toe with a shot that gets paddled aside by McGuckin. A rebound try is easily steered aside by McGuckin as taking a tumble down to the ice is Kalinin and a sarcastic cheer from the Danbury Atrix faithful over there in section 102. Let's dissect that play down below here with Karpinski. He's basically completely shielded off. Carter Shinkarik's doing everything he can. He's standing in the blue paint and he's not making contact with the goaltender. That's perfectly legal. So Anderson could just turn around and somehow, some way, Karpinski just sticks his blocker out, hogs that post really well, and then back the other way, the hat trick. So much sharper defensive play from them on those last couple of odd man rushes, counter attacks back the other way. It's been a lot more Delaware with higher percentage chances. That time, easy steer aside save, and then the cover up from McGuckin, better defensive shift for the Hattricks. Tom McGuckin is starting to see a lot more pucks come from odd angles. You know, it mm -hmm. seems like the Delaware Thunder are starting to get the memo that to send anything at the net of Tom McGuckin because really the book on Tom McGuckin is that really his rebound control isn't 100% there yet. He's getting better at it by right, the day, right. but it's still not the strongest aspect of his game. Yeah, what, what do you have to lose? You know, you're, you're facing a team that's red hot right now. They're on a five-game win streak. Let's just do whatever we can. You're at a weird angle, fire it at the, at the net. Good things will happen. Guys are crashing in. Uh, I really like the way that Delaware's responded in this game, particularly here in this second period. I think that they've leveled the playing field much more than we saw in that first. Shots on goal are currently nine to eight in favor of the hat tricks. That last little flurry on Karpinski gave them a shot advantage. Faceoff is won by the Thunder though, as a long shot by DeCristofaro is shouldered off by McGuckin. 
Here's Levesque leading the rush the other way. His pass goes off of a defensive stick, and it'll be settled down by Kalinin. Crosses the way to Pens up the left wing, and the officiating crew has to jump out of the way, and this will be an easy icing. We've seen that a couple times from Delaware, that if they don't have a play, they'll simply settle for the icing. It's an odd strategy for them. It really is, and you can tell it's not a, a play. They're not trying to hit a two-line pass in any way. I mean, that's a blast down the length of the ice. I mean, I guess it's kind of one of those, hey, I'm just going to swing at this thing, and hopefully it hits someone on its way down. Well, you know who succeeds at that is Port Huron, because mm -hmm. they have guys like Matt Graham, Matt Robertson, and yep. Dalton Jay, who they recognize, all right, if I send it down the length of the ice, one of my speedy wingers is going to beat the yep. race down there to, to win the icing battle and generate a chance. We saw that plenty of times opening weekend here at Danbury Arena. Here's Levesque taking it away. Levesque with a sharp angle try. Save. Rebound. Oh, they're going to say no goal. A shot attempt just fought off. Bronner, I thought, hit the back of the net. Another try by Bronner is fought off into the netting. Ooh, that came out quickly. I thought that hit the bottom part and bounced out of the net. Uh, that That's a wacky bounce right there. I thought you were right, Casey. It looked like, but just based on the angle where he was shooting to, I thought it was a good goal. And a couple of fans in the 105 section here right in front of that goal were saying, yeah, it hit the back of the net. That was just such a hard bounce. Sometimes it's tough for the official to check that out. It was low on the ice. I thought it hit the back bar at the center of the ice. I, I And I'll be honest, I. I we are over here over by the attacking zone right now for the hat trick, so we're closer to that net than we are the other ones. I could have sworn it, it crossed the goal, and Bronner put his arms up. Yep. But it came out so quickly. Uh, maybe I'm mm -hmm. wrong. Uh, it's, yeah, someone correct me in the YouTube comments. Maybe <laughs> I'm wrong. Go back and look. I, I could be wrong. Nevertheless, we're going to play on. It's three on three with 8.46 to go in the second period. It will be Evan McIntosh taking the draw. He's got Marker to his right, Municello to his left. McIntosh wins it. Municello will pinch in on the faceoff dot and gets it back to Devine. Good play by Municello as his shot is blocked by Bunnell. Bunnell springs now. Di Nicola. Di Nicola breaking in. Shoot, scores! Nick Di Nicola! His first game as a hat trick. His first goal as a hat trick. It's 4 3. How about that? Welcome to Danbury, Nick Di Nicola using his speed right through the neutral zone. We've seen this a couple of times. The Thunder defensemen separate just a little bit too much and just the extra step there. Good lead pass up through the neutral zone for the hat tricks. And Di Nicola goes to the wrister on that blocker side. Down low corner beats Karpinski once again. And the hat tricks regain the lead. Well, how about that? Parents in the stands. The Connecticut native playing in his first professional game with the Danbury hat tricks. Finds the back of the net on the breakaway. And what a lead pass that was to spring that breakaway too. Yeah, absolutely. Those are the plays that you need if you're Danbury. Back in your own zone, you see somebody moving through and it's just that little saucer pass right past the defender. It's such a, such a good feathered pass right through the neutral zone and then Di Nicola just does the rest. It was Gordy Bunnell who forced it up. He had to saucer it over yeah, two defensive yeah. sticks, too. What a pass. Yeah, that's and Bunnell's game. I mean, he, he really thrives on those plays, making those little touch passes that work so well. Ooh, here's Anderson redirecting it just off the glass. A chip shot from between the hash marks. Another try from a sharp angle. Here's Brauner. There's now the hat tricks, throwing everything but the kitchen sink at Karpinski. Marker is able to pick it up and escape. Aaron Atwell briefly loses his footing. It's a three on two if they hurry, Delaware. They enter in offside as Ryan Marker hunches over in frustration as they've called that, that offsides very tightly here today, more tightly than usual. They are calling it more tightly, but Delaware's just that much more eager. They're just jumping in, jumping in, and you hate to see that if, if you're Delaware because you're trying to get back into this game. And those are the rushes that they've been successful on. But again, another offsides, it kills that momentum. Ruiz will play it forward. He'll be knocked off the puck by Devine. Settling it down is to Cristofaro. He'll get it over to his defensive partner who will pitchfork it way up into the air and settle down by Tuma. Tuma plays it towards an area. It's taken away by Toe. Toe banks it off the end boards. Here's Demine spinning away from a four checker. Plays it back, and Gaffrick is the first to retrieve for the black and orange, and it will be banked out of the new, out into the neutral zone by Phil Bronner. Four to three is your score with seven minutes to go. Four to three in favor of Danbury, thanks to Nick DiNicola. 
with his first goal in Danbury. Centering pass intended for Bronner is out of reach, and now here come the Thunder in transition. Toe loses the handle on it. He leaves it back for Demean, who has no other play than to simply nudge it forward. Long pass was intended for Levesque. Ruiz got a stick on it. Now Mealy in his own zone with 6.30 to go. Mealy glides to his right, directs it towards Kasich. Kasich has Bullen Porter streaking towards the net. His shot safe. A rebound, rang it off the iron. Bunnell hit the red iron. Here's Mealy, has it on his backhand, gets it out to Bullen Porter in the slot and can't get a shot towards the net. That is the third post hit by the hat tricks in this game. Here's Kasich getting it down low, bouncing up on Karpinski, and he gloves it out of the air. A helter-skelter shift, but Cody Karpinski is able to do everything and gives thanks a little bit to his uh, friends in red behind him. <laughs> yeah, that's a great chance. Gordy Bunnell just coming off of that shift where he had that beautiful pass to Dina Cola for the goal. This time, he takes a nice little shot right there on the loose puck, and it just roofs off that crossbar. And you're right, Casey. The Hattricks have met the red iron a couple of times tonight. It's a little frustrating for them, but that's a better shift for them. That's what you want to see from these sides, especially from that third line unit. Bunnell was active. Uh, Bowen Porter was trying to get involved. That's what you need from that third line. Here's Dearson now behind the end line. Has Atwell at the near side point, finds him. Atwell tees up a slapper, and it gets redirected wide. Here's Dina Cola behind the end line. Out there with Shinkarik and Dearson. Brown takes a step in. Fires a shot that's gloved out of the air by Karpinski, and he holds. Now that's where Brown scored his first goal of the season this year. He got up to that right side point and just fired it on in and threw a couple of bodies. It found its way in, so he's going to keep doing that. He likes that opportunity. He likes that spot on the ice, so it's good for him to do that and uh, you know, just keep firing at the puck, at Here, the net. Here's Ruiz cutting across the goal line, trying to shove it home on the far side post and just barely able to keep the glove on the ground was Karpinski. And Karpinski is getting his teammate Morgan Hudson's jersey dirty as Morgan Hudson still has his nameplate on the back yeah. there. I hope he watches it before he gives <laughs> it back as <laughs> that shot hits off of the end boards. Here's Demean trying to one-hand it shuffleboard style up the gut of the ice, but can't connect with Toe. Demean knocked down by the big body of Bronner and carrying it in at the far side is Tuma. Tuma looking across the way to Levesque, and Tuma meets Demean. Tuma trying to get a bit more involved in the offense. And he has a couple of assists in his last few games as that shot is easily seen and held by McGuckin. Tuma does have two assists in his six games as a member of a Danbury Hattrix, and he played very solidly up in Elmira. Played a very physical game, too. Yeah, I mean, that's his bread and butter is Marty Tuma and the Danbury Hattrix, the Danbury hockey faithful, I should say. No, that's his bread and butter. And You're right, Casey. He's up there. He's trying to make some plays. He had a nice little move with the stick handle, and then he just had no, no one to go to, unfortunately, for him. So he couldn't get anything going there, but you could see him, you know, eager to jump up. We see a lot of defensemen. Obviously, defensemen who are formerly forwards, so they like to go in and, and jump in. Anderson is brought down hard to the ice, and that will be a call. A shot is saved by Karpinski. A backhander once more fought off by Karpinski. McGuckin is down at his bench, and Freeman was over the boards. And it'll be a power play as Corey Anderson was... It, look, it looked like a clothesline as he was entering in. It will be interference, the official call, and the Danbury Hattricks will get their first full two minutes of a power play. They only had a brief 10 seconds, so a technical power play. <laughs> but now they'll get their first legitimate shot. And it's huge, too, because it's it's Charlie Pence Jr. who gets called for the penalty, one of their better defenders, the guy who they're going to miss on this penalty kill. Got to take advantage. Here's Levesque at the near side point. Shot finds the stick of Ruiz and into the near side corner. Levesque once more, Shinkarik to his right, Ruiz to his left, dishes to Ruiz. It goes off of the glass and out into the neutral zone. Dearson, Ruiz, Bronner, Levesque, and Shinkarik, the five-man unit. All five forwards too, Casey. Yeah, countered by Marker out there with McIntosh as the forwards and Divine into Cristofaro as the penalty kill defense as the Hattricks will have to go the full 200 feet. And the puck is trickling, trickling, trickling. Who wants it? Dearson wants it. It's picked off by McIntosh. Finds Marker. Back to McIntosh's shot. A mask save by McGuckin. 
And perhaps once more a case of one too many passes as Marker had a cleaner look to the six by four. I was just about to say it, and it's a sloppy pass from the Hattricks in their own zone that led to that. You got to clean those up. Absolutely. Here's Levesque entering in with Bronner behind him. Shinkarik settling in the high slot, takes a step in, fields. Blind pass intended for Kasich is behind him. Levesque will cycle it along the boards. 50 seconds to go in the power play. Here's Levesque at the near side circle. Bronner setting the screen. Trying to get it through to Bronner. Gets it to his forehand, is paddled aside, and easily cleared out of the length of the ice. 40 seconds to go on the power play. 3-10 to go in the second period. Puck goes off of the skates of Matty Kasich, and it'll be forced wide. A good defensive play there by Thomas Municello. And now it's the Delaware Thunder's turn to provide a little bit of pressure on the penalty kill. Here's Marker on the backhander. Oh, getting a piece of it was McGuckin. Extending his right arm. Wow. Reaching back and miraculously keeping that out from behind the net. And here's Bunnell the other way, crossing to Anderson. His shot deflected wide. What a save, Tom McGuckin, way out of his crease too. He came way above the blue paint and somehow got that right side out just enough to stop that shot. I don't believe he made that save. Well, that is most certainly your Ameriprise financial save of the game. Are you saving enough for retirement with Derek Packett and Ameriprise financial? And as Tom McGuckin, goodness me, what a save. And we're back to five on five with 2.15 to go in the second period. The Hattricks lead four to three, but the Delaware Thunder were able to capitalize on some sloppy exit passes from the Hattricks and were able to generate some shorthanded chances of their own. And we've seen both sides get a couple of shorthanded looks so far in this game. Yeah, it's just, it's just been lackadaisical, I think, from both offensive units for both teams uh, in their own zone. They just get kind of sloppy with the puck and, you know, the penalty killers take advantage. They like the open space. And you mentioned that a large part of that is that you've got five forwards out on, on the ice for the mm -hmm. Danbury Hattricks. You wonder if perhaps just your natural instinct right, takes over right. and you wonder like where their positioning is, if only just for a moment. Shot goes off the end boards and bounces out with 90 seconds remaining in the second period. Shots are currently 37 to 20 on the game in favor of the Danbury Hattricks. It is 17 to 12 in the period in favor of Danbury. Demean looping it around to cutting, has it on the left wing, settles it down, and maneuvers his way deliberately up the ice and will simply send it over towards the end line. Atwell back to retrieve for Danbury. Levesque on the left wing with a minute five to go in the period. Here's Shinkarik. Gets it out to Brauner in a little bit of open space, so pitch and catch and pouncing on it is Delaware. Shot attempt by Nat and a toe save by McGuckin. And once more, the passing from the uh, Danbury Hatcher, it's almost like Delaware is lulling them into a false sense of security. They're not providing a lot of pressure. Then all of a sudden, it's intercepted. I mean, you thought that Bronner was going to Delaware as if it was a teammate, and right in front was is Nat, and he just rips one. And again, McGuckin, who's made some save after save over these last five minutes, is really, really sharp in the second period. And after that third goal that he let in, I think he's, he's had one of the better periods he's had all season. 50 seconds to go in the period. Here's Knapp once more on the sharp side. Nat takes a hard check from behind by Marty Tuma as he finishes his check and brings him down to his belly. Patrolling the perimeter of the zone is Marker. Gets it out now to Masters. Masters with a shot, kick save, Blungukin. Nat once more brought down to the ice and he's holding his head, he's hurt. And we'll get a stoppage in play as Karndeep Nat took a hard check high. Tuma was also down in the far side midboards. And Nap, oh boy. Yeah, Casey, I missed the hit for Nat, but uh, Tuma was definitely tripped on the play, and I think that uh, the officials probably missed this one as well. Yeah, that's that's a hard check. You know, I, I would like to see the replay to see what exactly caused him to get that contact, bear the brunt of it. Uh, you never want to see a player get hurt, especially a player like Karndeep Nat, who plays an aggressive style of playing. He's trying. He, you mentioned auditions at the beginning for mm -hmm. Di Nicola and for Karpinski. Karndeep Nat is another one of those guys. He's trying to earn that top line spot, and he's trying to make sure that he's a big part of the future for Delaware. He was acquired via trade for cash considerations for the Delaware Thunder, and so with 25.9 seconds to go, the head athletic trainer Amy Schneider is out there to take a look at. Karn Deep Nat as he slowly is able to get up to his feet. He ha clearly had his bell rung and it looks like he's bleeding. Yeah, he's got he's got some blood right in that shield you can see. 
And some on the ice there as well. So they will likely have to clean that up. If not now, then in 25.9 seconds. But I believe it. I believe it's a rule that you have to clean yeah. it up immediately. But they seem to be making their way over. And yep, there we go. It looks like the doors will be opening up, and we'll get a scrape of the ice. Well, now is as good a time as any to remind you to head to DanburyHatricks.com and join our mailing list. Be sure to enter in your email address on our homepage at DanburyHatricks.com to keep up to date on all the important updates and happenings around the Danbury Hatricks and Danbury Arena. Tomorrow, Jack, we have a holiday ice skating showcase. You saw a figure skater during the first intermission, Isabella Martinez, mm -hmm. who was fantastic. Yeah, she was incredible. I, she's I was far more flexible than I could ever <laughs> hope to be in my life. And, and a better skater, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm up here and not yeah. down there. And Isabella Martinez and the Danbury Ice Angels will be putting on a Holiday Classics Showcase to tomorrow afternoon here at Danbury Arena at 2.30. So you can get your tickets at the door there. Admission is $10 or $5 with the donation of an unwrapped Toys for Tots toy. So be sure to come on out and support the Danbury Ice Angels tomorrow, head by Dan and Halasco. Mm -hmm. All right, it's, it's always a fantastic Holiday Showcase, and we have our Skate with Santa yeah, coming up on the 15th. There are a lot of great events here now around the holiday season, and just moving forward, I mean, we have uh, motorcycle racing on ice coming up in January after the Christmas and, <laughs> and New Year's holiday. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff happening. So if you want to come down, down the Danbury Arena, not just for hockey, but your your figure skating needs, your your Santa skating needs, in case you need to deliver <laughs> your uh, your wish list this year. That's true. You can write your wish list on the ice as part of our yep. Skate with Santa, which is on December 15th from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. here at Danbury Arena as McGuckin will hold with 11.6 to go. Always a lot of happenings, especially around the holidays. You love it. It's awesome. <laughs> it's great. And you can obviously keep up to date by joining our mailing list, and you'll be kept up to date on whenever these events are scheduled. As the faceoff will be to the right of McGuckin, likely the final faceoff of the period, as it will be Marker going up against Shinkarik. One by Shinkarik. Gets it back to Atwell, plays it around the boards out into the neutral zone. Final five seconds, Bronner coming in hard on cutting, trying to force a turnover, does, but Bolin Porter is unable to enter in on sides, and that will do it for the second period. Four to three is your score at the end of 40 minutes, and Jack, what a back and forth period that was. It certainly seemed like both sides had a chance to find the back of the net, and be it by blocked shots, miraculous saves, the post somehow the puck was kept out of the net more frequently than it found its way back. Yeah, it was a much more even period, and I think that both teams are, have to be happy with the chances that cr they created. Obviously, somebody needs to find the net a little bit more, and I think, you know, for the hat tricks, they go up into this period. Delaware comes out. They respond very, very well. They get that power play goal within the first few minutes. But Danbury, I mean, they, they did not sit back on their heels. They were able to find ways to get back into the zone. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's those plays that you're going to see, you know, Bunnell to the streaking newcomer, Di Nicola, who finds the back of the net and takes the lead. You know, that's a huge goal, not only for his seasonal resume, but for this hat-trick season resume. And, you know, you have, you have 21 minutes on the board there to uh, hit the reset button and, and have the final 20 minutes here. It should be an exciting period of hockey. Well, we're going to take a quick break here at the Danbury Arena. We'll be right back for live coverage of the third period of Danbury Hattricks Hockey on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. I'm Casey Bron Bryant alongside Jack O'Mara. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for live coverage of the Danbury Hattricks hockey team here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Time now for a quick FPHL out-of-town scoreboard. Here's Jack O'Mara. Thanks so much, Casey. The Elmira Enforcers hanging on to a 3-2 lead versus the Watertown Wolves. That's an exciting one. Got to keep your eyes out for that one if you're Danbury. Watertown, the leaders in the Eastern Division. As for uh, Port Huron leading the uh, Columbus River Dragons by a score of 2-1, another division leader that's trailing up to this point. And that's the, the scores that we have so far reported on the FPHL website. Well, I, be I believe uh, Danville and Mentor. Danville has a lead over Mentor 2-1, to one, to my knowledge. Uh, and that's, that's another important one yep. for us because uh, Mentor leads the Eastern Division ahead of uh, Danbury by four points. So that's another key one there. Well, we now have an update on that game. Danville and Mentor knotted up at two apiece. Well, there you go. Well, if, if you're a hat trick fan, you are rooting hard for the Danville Dashers. As puck is dropped, but meanwhile, we have action here in Danbury as the Hat City is looking to finish out a Friday night contest against the Delaware Thunder. The Hat Tricks take a 4 3 lead into the third period. Here's Carndeep Nat back out onto the ice. You know, Jack, I had a look at a replay in between periods, and Carndeep Nat collided with the knee of Eric Masters, mm. so it wasn't a check high. It was as he was diving headlong for the puck, he's, his head collided with the knee. It's good to see him back out onto the ice and healthy after getting uh, stitched up a little bit by the training staff. And there he is trying to redirect the shot towards McGuckin, and it goes wide of the net. Hattricks attacking from left to right on your Facebook, excuse me, on your YouTube screen. Wrong social media app there. Uh, as the Hattricks are donning their home blacks. As there's Marty Tuma chasing after the puck, the former Florida Panther draft pick. Drafted back in 2003 in the fifth round. Is now spending his 38, 34 year with the Danbury Hattricks after taking some time off from hockey. Last played with the Danbury Titans in 2016. As part of a Danbury Titans team that went to the FPHL Commissioner's Cup final that year. And Jack, you're a, a Danbury native. That Titans team, the Whalers team, Marty Tuma was a big part of that team back in the day. Yeah, absolutely. He's one of those guys. So Steve Brown and, and Phil Braun are guys that you just know are veteran guys who've been through the thick of everything. And that's another thing. Those guys know what it's like to, to get to the final stage. Of course, you know, a couple times Danbury fallen short of the last couple of seasons, but... You know, those are guys that you're going to need down the stretch because they know how to they handle themselves come playoff time and come crunch time. Puck goes out to the far side, midboards of the Danbury Hattricks end as a high shot goes off the shoulders of McGuck and a rebound try is shot just wide by Anton Kalinin. Here's Kasich cutting across the neutral zone. Lead pass springs Bunnell. Bunnell in behind the defense. Bunnell to the backhander just wide. Gordy Bunnell snuck his way by the defense. And was able to get a look by the 6x4 opening and just shoved it wide. Well, excluding the intermission, Gordy Bunnell's name has been said a bunch of times. He had that feather pass. He had the great opportunity. He hit the post. And then on that one, if he puts that on net, that's a goal. Because the goaltender in Karpinski is hard left. He's got all of his momentum going to the left. There's a wide open cage. He got it up in the air. He just missed it wide. Faceoff will be to the left of Tom McGuckin, who has stopped 21 of 24 shots on goal so far in the game. It will be McIntosh taking the draw against Kendall Bolin Porter. Marker to his right, Young to his left is McIntosh. <laughs> right now there's six Delaware Thunder teams. There were seven. <laughs> Slowly whittling it down until we get to the right number. Process of elimination. And McIntosh for his efforts will be booted from the faceoff dot. So, musical chairs, who wants the draw? Who wants to play? It's you, Delaware Thunder win the draw. McIntosh, download a marker. Thinks about the wraparound try, has Aaron Atwell meeting him at the near side post. Leaves it for Young. Young collides with Bull and Porter, and Atwell is able to spring Mealy, who joins the rush. Mealy over to Bunnell, back to Mealy, back to Bunnell, shot save, rebound out by Kasich, is skated wide of the net. Mealy and Bunnell playing pitch and catch on the zone entry, almost caught Karpinski off guard. Yeah, Mealy's been playing well out of the defensive position too. It all starts with the seal out, Aaron Atwell playing well around his own net. Kendall Bowen porter a little back check work there, and it turns into a 200-foot a hockey game for the Hattricks and Steve Mealy and 
Gordy Bennell continue to find ways to get in front of the net. And here's Bronner with a saucer pass to Ruiz. Sharp angle try hits off the end board. Centering pass out to Levesque. Gets a stick on it, but Karpinski covers. And that zone entry was made possible because of a nifty stick play by Steve Mealy back in the defensive zone. He's playing a full 200-foot game tonight. Yeah, that's what you like to see, especially when the, the players like Kyle Gonzalez and Sam Williams, you start to see those guys depart. You're going to have to have some step-up moments from the guys here. And Steve Mealy, I think, has been playing a sharp all-around game today. Three and a half minutes gone by here in the third period. Hattricks lead four to three. Steve Mealy, as we mentioned, is a point per game player right now. He's got six points in six games as a shot is seen and held by McGuckin as he looks that one into his catching glove on the left side, tosses it handily to himself. And we'll get an offensive zone draw for the Delaware Thunder. And I would expect to see a lot more of Ryan Marker as the, as the game progresses. Right now they have Anton Kalinin who has seen a lot of ice time out there with Evgeny Demin and Thomas Municello. And I would expect it won't be long before we see number 16 back out on the ice again as the Delaware Thunder are chasing one. Yeah, he's probably going to have pretty much every other shift on the ice. You need to feed the hot hand. You need to feed your playmakers in, the, in these scenarios when it's tight, when you need a goal, when you need the production and he's going to be that guy to, to come in here. I mean, 24 points, the next highest guy coming into the game, Brennan Young. It's, it's not close to where Ryan Marker is compared to his teammates. Well, Marker is a career two-point-per-game player, but first here comes Anderson looking to the net. Wrist shot off the knob of the stick of Karpinski. Right, last season, Marker was in Danville and had 28 points in 14 games. He comes into this game having scored 24 points in 12 games. I mean, that's that's an Ahmed Mafuz-like yeah. production level. Yeah, that, that's a that's a huge bounce back here, if you will, in terms of, you know, turning on the Jets. And he's got a lot of time to get to 28, to beat that number from last year. <laughs> you know, well, with, at this rate, it won't take long. <laughs> Give him another month and he'll be there. No, but that, those are the positives you have to take away from Delaware. All right, you have, you have an outstanding player that you can really build around in Ryan Marker, who's been so so productive in a team that's that's struggled to find wins this season you want to keep finding ways to to get him hot and, and hopefully build around this team well you also have a teammate of his from danville and brandon contrado who once he gets back from this two-game suspension danbury will not see him this weekend but mm. he will eventually return to the thunder as bullen porter's back pass is behind bunnell and will be picked off by toe and carried the other way by delaware so delaware has the talent up front as a long shot is a kick saved by McGuckin. It bounces out to the slot, but Bullen Porter will steer it aside. Now here's Casper Dearson entering in with Bunnell and Bullen Porter. Has Mealy bringing up the rear. Mealy has it hop off of the heel of his stick, and back come the Thunder in transition. Here's Toe one on one on Freeman. Bullen Porter lifting the stick from behind. A good play by Bullen Porter is finished off by Freeman. Yeah, he's had three or four good defensive plays in, the, in this third period in his own zone. I mean, he's playing almost as a third defenseman on, the, on his shifts. And he's done well with that. Here's Levesque crossing the blue line, chopping it to himself. Levesque shot wide. Bronner turnaround shot is easily stopped by Karpinski. Pops up over the shoulders of Mealy and out into the neutral zone. And Bronner, it looked like he was teeing off with the three wood there. He had his stick way above his head, looking like P.K. Subban <laughs> winding up with that almost comical, exaggerated yeah. wind up there from that sharp angle trying to, by sheer force of will, blast it through his pads. Here's Ruiz dropping it back to Levesque. It was poked away by the defensive stick of Kinsman. Entering in is Young, dropping it back to Marker. Marker looks to the net, well off. Here's Kinsman on the right wing. Leaves it for Young. Marker behind the net, finds him. Marker looking for the wraparound try. He scores! Ryan Marker! with tremendous reach, is able to reach around McGuckin's left leg pad and stuff it home. We're tied at four. Well, there you go. Ryan Marker involved down low in the dirty areas, and he's getting worked on there by Steve Mealy, and it's just the leverage that he uses. Gets that puck to the outside of the stick, and he's just able to pin his stick around, almost like a pinwheel, to get it to that far side post. McGuckin's hanging on to that near side post, so it takes him longer for him to get around. The stick is quicker than the body, and Ryan Marker, the difference maker, to tie things up at 4-4. Well, Ryan Marker, we were calling his name, wondering when the hero ball would begin for Ryan Marker, and there it is, his 14th goal of the season and 25th point. Here's Shin Carrick. 
So it'll be Eli Kinsman getting the secondary assist and Brennan getting the primary. And terrific shift as that one gets skied way up and it looks like it found its way into the sweet section over there. Yeah, heads up. That's not often. You've got the protective glass in front of you there. That came in at just the right oh. angle. And a souvenir. <laughs> well, you, you know, you want to have as close of a get as close as possible to the action when you're up in the suites. You want to have as enjoyable an experience as you can up there, and mm -hmm. it doesn't get much closer than that. A vulcanized <laughs> rubber disc finding its way towards your head. Here's Vladislav Gavrik up the right wing as we've got ourselves a new hockey game. It's four to four. Six minutes, 45 seconds gone by in the final frame of regulation time. Up the left wing is Eric Masters, crossing the way intended for McIntosh, hops over his stick. Here's Tuma, slinging it around is Corey Anderson, and the Hattricks will go off for a four-man change. Back over towards McGuckin, and this will be retrieved by Steve Brown. Brown lifts it down the length of the ice, and it will be going past everybody. It will not reach the end line in time, so no icing. Matty Kasich streaking in on the left wing, hops over his stick, bringing up the rear as Atwell feeds Bullen Porter, and it will trickle towards Karpinski, who covers. Seven minutes and 24 seconds gone by in the third. Yeah, back and forth start to this third period to the first seven and a half, give or take. And you know, that right there is just a better testament of, of Delaware once again getting in the passing lanes of Danbury's attack. And the, the problem, I think, right now is, is Danbury's top line is, is not getting the chances that we saw them get in the first period. They need to find ways to get better uh, shots on goal, more high percentage chances right now, move the puck a little bit better. Faceoff is won by Gordy Bennell, trying to force it towards the Delaware net, and it will be cut off by the defense. Here's Aaron Atwell. It hops off his skates and then fanning on it was Kalina. Now entering in at the far side is Atwell. Direction finder way off and finds glass. And it rattles around the glass and finds its way out into the neutral zone under the stick of Municello. Back over to Atwell who settles things down for Danbury. Bunnell enters in, hits off a defensive stick and goes up into the netting. We talk about that kind of shot a lot, Jack, when you enter into the zone and if, it, if you find the right angle, it just catches the glass and keeps rolling like a roulette wheel mm -hmm. and finds its way out into the neutral zone. It's very important to not get too much of your shot when you're at that angle and get it towards the 6x4 open. Right, absolutely. You, you need to be you know, pinpoint accurate, if you will, when you're making those plays. You, you don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to give anything up, especially in front of that net. So you have to be sure of yourself when you're making those sorts of plays. And icing will be called against the Delaware Thunder, so the Hattricks will have an offensive zone draw. Well, plus... The Hattricks have dominated possession for the majority of the game with brief intermittent mm -hmm. stints of right, Delaware. Right. You want to be able to sustain pressure and really grind the opponent down. You want to take away their mm -hmm. legs. As it will be Marker going against, up against Ruiz, and Ruiz wins it back. Taking a step in as Mealy holds the line. Mealy to Bronner on his right, back to Mealy. Mealy over looking across the way to Levesque, and it's broken up and carried out of danger by Brennan Young. Here's Young up with Kinsman. Young trying to get past Tuma. Cycles it around behind the net. Ruiz gets a piece of it. Young took a hard check behind the play. Here's Kinsman chipping it towards the slot. It'll be batted out by Johnny Ruiz into the neutral zone. <laughs> Holding on to it is De Cristofaro. It's taken away by De Nicola. Loses his footing. Marker is there. And you, you hold your breath every time Marker is anywhere near the puck at this point. Yeah, you know what he can do in... in De Niccolo makes up for his mistake there, just tripping over his own two feet, but he fought off Marker just enough to retain possession and eliminate any sort of chance. Turnover, here's McIntosh now with a shot. That's gloved down by McGuckin. Atwell and Shinkarik. Shinkarik tried to make a fancy move at the wrong spot right in front of his net. That's the thing. It's a 4-4 it's game with 11 minutes to go in regulation here, and, and the Hattricks are just trying to do too much. I mean, you're down in your own zone. Just get it out of the zone. <laughs> you don't need to be all fancy at that point. And you got to give a lot of credit. McIntosh is right there. He makes a good move. But McGuckin makes another stand-up save. Yes, Hattricks have dominated in possession. But how many times has McGuckin had to make those saves when it's just one-on-one? -on -one and he's just fought pucks off. Absolutely. The chances that Delaware has gotten have been all high danger. Yeah. That's a careless play by Shin Carrick that almost results in the go-ahead goal. The Delaware Thunder have not led in this game. 
A trailing shot by McIntosh is blocker to side by McGuckin. At one point, the score was 3-1 to one in favor of the hat tricks. The Delaware Thunder have been able to cut it down to 4-4. Slowly whittling their way back into the game with 10 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in regulation time. If we do not have a go-ahead goal in the second half of this third period, we will have a five-minute three-on-three overtime. Entering in his demean, cycles it down low, intended for Masters. He's doing battle with Vlad Gavrik. Masters wins it away. Masters has DeCristofaro to his left, skates away from him. His shot is steered aside by McGuckin. Here's Gavrik lifting it up and batted out of the air by Masters. That will be played with a high stick. And we'll get a media timeout here with 9.54 remaining in regulation time. And Jack, after crawling back from seemingly the dead, the Delaware Thunder at one point down 3-1. to one. They made it 3-2 to two at one point, and then the Patricks pulling away. Not so fast. Delaware has really fought their way back into this one. And they really have to feel good about themselves because I, I feel like they have the momentum in, in this game right now with 9.54 to go. They're, they're pushing the issue, and, and Danbury's sloppy with the puck in their own zone. They've taken advantage of that, and you figure, you know, Tom McGuckin can't stop all of these high percentage shots. Eventually, one of them's going to find the back of the net. A couple of them have, obviously. But you've got to be more careful with the puck, and, and you've got to have more offensive chances in the zone. Yes, possession time is great. You, you got to find a way to get to the open man. And a couple times I think Delaware's closed down on guys who are just taking an extra second too long, move the puck quicker, move the puck faster, I think is the way to go. And not just your decision making, but the actual speed of the puck. Fire that thing in there because I think it's been a little bit slow moving for the Hattricks over the last five minutes. Puck will go into the near side midboards of the Danbury Hattricks attacking zone. Chasing after it is Charlie Penns Jr. going up against Nicola Levesque. Here's Bronner getting to it. Steve Brown will send it in deep. Mealy pinching in at the near side point. Ruiz will recuperate. Mealy has it on his backhand, spins around, and will si simply cycle it over to Bronner, who finds Levesque. Finds Mealy once more at the far side circle. Mealy is all over the ice right now. He's skating from end to end, side to side. There's Mealy having it poked away from him. And now Brennan Young trying to escape, but here's Johnny Ruiz entering in. Ruiz tries to tee up a slapper, and there's Mealy entering in off sides. 9.13 to go in regulation time, and a bit of frustration settling in for the Danbury Hattricks right now as, as it's a shift that should result in more shots on goal than they are getting right now. And it's tough because you applaud the effort for Steve Mealy, but he, he's a defenseman in those situations. Johnny Ruiz is on the puck. Just sit down. Just sit down and wait for him to gain the line. There's no reason for you to be skating in ahead of him. Well, Ruiz, Ruiz is one of the best playmakers on the team. Here's Gavrick now with a shot from the near side point that goes wide. Gavrick once more fields it at the Colonials logo in the high slot. Here's Corey Anderson getting brought down from behind, and that will nurse a tripping call. McGuckin to the bench. Bronner will come over the boards as the extra skater. He's on. Gavrick will have it touched up by Kieran Devine, and this will be a power play brought to you by Ferris Electric. Let's light him up. Yeah, this is going to be a huge moment in the game for both, both sides because Danbury, again, not a lot of huge opportunities, just that one full power play that we saw. It wasn't a good one for them, and, and they've been particularly successful this season all year long. they got to find a way to find the back of the net. I like that last line that Billy McCreary had out there. It was Shin Carrick, it was Anderson, and it was Di Nicola, all on that top line, or that second line, if you will. Dearson gets that drop down, and Di Nicola moves up to that second. I like that, I like that look. And we'll see more of Corey Anderson out on this shift, as Anderson looks like he will be out there with Bunnell and Kasich on the forward line, Gavrick and Atwell on the blue line. And it looks like we'll have more attention being drawn to the corner on the near side of the Delaware Thunder defending zone. So we'll take a brief time out here as the ice crew will come back out. So we want to remind everyone to follow the Danbury Hattricks at Danbury Hattricks on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Be sure to keep up to date on all of the exclusive interviews, highlights, and live game streams across all of our social media platforms. Casey Bryant here alongside Jack O'Mara with 8.43 remaining in regulation time. And even though the Danbury Hattricks find themselves relenting a bit, 
they have a chance to break ahead with a power play coming up as Evgeny Demin will sit in the penalty box. What will the Danbury Hatchers have to do on this upcoming power play shift, Jack, to find the back of the net? I mean, shoot the puck. That's that's, a, that's a, <laughs> It's as simple as it is, but you know, you've seen the possession time again. These low quality chances have been developing. Yes, puck, will, puck is trickling in. Karpitsky has not been challenged much in this period whatsoever. No. He has not. I mean, this is a one goal period thus far. Danbury hasn't really had too many high percentage opportunities. You fire the puck more, those start to develop a little bit. And with the man advantage, you get a hot guy like Corey Anderson, who's been successful on the power play. Matthias Kasich has made some strides lately in the season. Those are guys you want on the ice right now. Those are guys who are going to have to step up. And, and, you know, you see it all the time. But uh, Johnny Ruiz has been quieted today. He, he was good in the first period. I think since then he's been really shut down, and he's probably a guy that you want to circle and say, let's get going here, and he could be a difference maker. Ruiz leads the team with four power play goals on the season, and this is a league-best power play that's going yep. to work here for the Damperiatrics. They entered today operating at 26% efficiency. They've been held off the scoreboard. Why? How has that happened? How has Delaware been able to do this? Well, I mean, they've only had one power play, so that 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 helps. One full but, power play. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But so still. it's it's really what it comes down to is as Delaware used some open space in front. Uh, I think Billy McCreary had the five attackers, five forwards on that power play unit at one point. That's what created some of the odd man chances going down that way. So I, I think that you know Delaware's been sharper in that center of the ice. You call it Royal Road right there. In between the, the two circles and the hash marks, there hasn't been a lot of play there. As soon as uh, Hattrick's player is on there, there's Delaware sticks everywhere. If not, Karpinski's been up to the task to make those saves, and they've just been good right in the center of the ice. It's everything everywhere else. They have to look at those circles. Anderson on the right side circle, look for a guy like Bronner or Levesque on the near side circle. And those guys have to be the difference makers at this point in the game. And you get an opportunity. I mean, you want to make something out of nothing here where the hat tricks had an extra chance to draw up a play with that ice crew taking care of the issue in the near side corner. So now you have a rejuvenated unit. They had a little bit of a breather with their fresh legs. And they have a chance now to draw up a play. We'll see if Corey Anderson is able to win it back. He's got Gaffrick at the far side point and Aaron Atwell standing on the Colonials C in the high slot, the NA3HL squad that we have here. And these are scenarios in which you miss Kyle Gonzalez because he was that front runner, he was that point man. Yes, he could sit back if he needed to, but he directed traffic. Atwell with a one-timer, and there was that play. That's Gavrick at the far side point feeding Atwell, and that will be the only shot attempt that they will get in this shift as it will be skied up into the air. McIntosh with a bouncing puck that squibs wide of the net. Atwell has it in his skates. Marker and McIntosh, the two attacking penalty killers. DeCristofaro will be out there with Penns Jr. to complete the four-man penalty kill unit. 90 seconds to go in the power play, 8.15 to go in the third period. 4-4 to four is your score. Here's Corey Anderson with a head of steam. Motoring up the left wing, being pursued by McIntosh, crosses the blue line, drops it back to Kasich, has it on his backhand, will play it out to Bunnell, who's facing the net. Here's Atwell sliding it to his left, Gavrick. Gavrick and Atwell playing pitch and catch with DeCristofaro clogging up the shooting lane. They'll get it out to Atwell with McIntosh in front of him. No one setting a screen in front of the goaltender. Here's Bunnell with Kasich in front. His pass attempt gets deflected up into the netting and will get a stoppage of play. 104 remaining in the power play. Well, you said it, Casey. There's no screen in front and there's no room to pass. Hattricks have to keep it on the outskirts there. Delaware doing a good job keeping their shape in that diamond formation. They had that one player, I believe, it was, uh, it was Charlie Penns down low who was just kind of flanking. Eventually, Linnell had some space down there, but it still couldn't pass to anyone up top. It will be Bronner, Dearson, and Ruiz out there with Levesque and Shinkarik. So back to that five forward unit for Billy McCreary and company. Here's Levesque with a shot attempt that's redirected wide. Bronner is the first to get there. Ruiz is on the doorstep looking for him. Can't connect. It's broken up, but kept in by Shinkarik. Great play. Here's Levesque looking across the way once more intercepted. And now here come the Thunder in transition shorthanded. Municello with a pair of interceptions with 35 seconds remaining in the power play, 7.15 to go in the third period. In case he hears that five forward unit once again. Here's, Shin, excuse me, here's Dearson lifting it up into the far side corner. Pens will throw a check on Levesque. Here's Ruiz settling it down. Gets it out to Bronner at the point. 20 seconds to go in the power play. Here's Shin Carrick. Over to his left, Bronner. With Levesque setting a screen in front. Here's Shin Carrick over to Dearson. Pitch and catch, Shin Carrick. 
has Ruiz and Levesque and Bronner all lurking in the blue paint. Here's Dearson taking Shoot. a step in, feeds the one-timer to Shankarik, and he can't get the full meat of his stick on it, and that will do it for the power play. And back here come the Thunder. Cutting across the slot, Colleen in looking for the shot, attempt is stripped from behind by Dearson. And the Danbury Hattricks unable to get, I believe only uh, one shot on goal. I don't even know if they got one through. As now we have Cutting and Levesque. Cutting is grabbing at the collar of the sweater of Nicola Levesque. And the two of them will be drawn off each other. Levesque draw, drawing. Levesque has a fight on his card this year. And Cutting, well, we mentioned before, has a goal and, well, 50 penalty minutes. So assuredly, he is no stranger to getting involved. And it looks like Cutting will be shown the door. Yeah, I don't think Levesque wanted to go because of, of the situation in this game. I think he wanted to stay on the ice, and, and Cutting was all about it. But we'll see, uh, we'll see if Levesque gets any time. He might get some time as well. Well, Phil Bronner is voicing his perplexion towards the officiating crew, and as is Nicola Levesque, who is a player coach for the Danbury Hattricks. He is an assistant for this team, and I believe uh, the, the, yeah, indeed, Levesque will be shown the penalty box as the door is open and waiting for him. So we'll see if this results in a power play for the Danbury Hattricks. I believe they're going to say that it was a cross check going against Levesque and a rough going against Marker, excuse me, Cutting. I could be wrong though, and because I do see five skaters on each side right now out on the ice. So I believe it would be coincidental minors and we play on. I think you're right, Casey. Somebody in the, the scorer's box just put the five and five fingers up or no, it's, it looks like it'll be... Uh, oh, we have Levesque's penalty time up on the boards. Well, we'll see what the official ruling is once we hear it from public address announcer Kieran Stack. As we have milling about and uh, faceoff will be in the neutral yeah, zone. Four on which, four. Yeah, we will have four on four action coming up. As yes, indeed, it will be coincidental penalties resulting in a four on four. So Levesque and Cutter, cutting, excuse me, cutting, We'll take a seat in the penalty box. So 6.50 remains, and now you have a lot of open ice. We saw both teams generating offensive chances at five on four mm -hmm. when they only had four skaters. Now you have so much more open space. It yep. allows for a lot of creativity, and look who's out there on the ice taking the draw is Ryan Marker. Yeah, you got to get him going, and you know it's, it's tough when you're on the, the penalty kill to get your, your better skaters out there, especially if they're scorers. The Marker's out there now with a little bit more space. You want to find him in front of the net. So cutting, it looks like, will receive two minutes for roughing. As here's Marker entering in, and we see two of the speedier forwards out for the Danbury Hattricks in DeNicola and Kendall Bullen Porter. Here's Marker, high slot, Kalinin cutting towards the net, drops it back to DeCristoforo, a shot is blocked in front by Steve Brown. Looked like that caught him in, caught him in the hindquarters. Here's DeNicola entering in with Bullen Porter. Bolin Porter takes a hard tumble across the end boards, keeping it alive are the hat tricks and the whistle will blow. And it looks like a slash will be going. I believe that was going against Delaware, but they blew the whistle when Danbury had possession of the puck. Yeah, that, that's a, a premature whistle right there. And, and it, is a, it is a penalty against the... Well, then why did the whistle blow, I wonder? Well, because it was wholly retained by Danbury. I think that's why Brown wanted that explanation. Maybe it was deflected. I didn't see it. I, I don't think so. Possibly, but they usually wait for possession to be settled. Yeah. Never, nevertheless, it will be Charlie Penns Jr. taking a seat in the penalty box. He will join his teammate in Taylor Cutting. So it will be a power play chance for the Danbury Hat Tricks. And well, we, you'll have four on three coming up. So you talk about open space. Yeah. Yeah, that's Penn's second uh, penalty. It's I'm actually, I'm it's wrong. Not they they yeah. sent Penn's over to the box, and then he was replaced by DeCristofaro. So apologies, Daniel DeCristofaro will receive penalty minutes seven and eight in his season. So here's Aaron Atwell in the high slot. He's got Ruiz out there with Bronner and Shinkarik. Out to Shinkarik at the near side circle. Marker, the lone penalty kill forward. He's out there with Penn's and Devine. Here's Ruiz with a minute five to go in the four on three before it becomes a five on four. Ruiz out to Atwell in the high slot. Dishes it to his right, Shinkarik. Bronner in front of the net. Ruiz calling for it at the far side circle. Here's Atwell feeding Shinkarik. 
Now over to Ruiz, the far side circle. Let's go Hattricks Chan up from the Danbury faithful. Here's Atwell taking a step into the near side circle, looking low, shot saved by Karpinski. Taken by Penns at the far side circle and skated out of danger by Marker. Here's Marker on the right wing. He'll stop short, kill some precious seconds, crossing the way to Devine. Devine, oh, just getting a stick on it was Shinkarik. He prevented the shorthanded break in. 30 seconds to go in the four on three. Shinkarik entering in. No look to the net. He's forced wide by Penns, loses the handle on it. Out to the slot, looking for Bronner. Ruiz couldn't connect with him. Behind the end line it goes. Shinkarik is brought down, goes in awkwardly against the boards. He does battle with Devine. Ruiz has it pop up to Bronner. Mealy is lurking in the slot. 10 seconds to go on the four on three before it becomes a five on four and Levesque and Cutting come out onto the ice. Shinkarik fakes a shot over to Mealy. Mealy to Shinkarik, back to Mealy. One time shot, just, just goes wide. Here's Ruiz settling it down. Levesque and Cutting out on the ice, five on four for 30 seconds. Brought down to the ice is Ruiz. That will be a delayed call. McGuckin to the bench. 30 seconds, it will be a six on four as Anderson joins the action. Here's Mealy in the high slot. Mealy with a shot that's gloved and held by Karpinski. And we'll have a five on three for 22 seconds and more extended time for the hat tricks. And finally, we're able to take a breath. And finally, you could take a breath after all that action. <laughs> the hat tricks, they were setting up way too high. There was no movement lower other than Phil Bronner, who's just getting blocked up by cutting down low. There's no room for him. It was just outskirts passing once again. They have to have more pucks on net. A couple of shots that have just gone wide too many times here. Great opportunity now for, for the hat tricks moving forward with this five on three for 22 seconds. We'll have a timeout here on the ice. The biggest thing right there, Johnny Ruiz takes that second penalty because it buys you another full two minutes on that power play. You can keep pressure because that's one thing that the hat tricks, yes, they didn't convert on those power plays, but they are now establishing full pressure in these zones with a two-man advantage for 22 seconds, you're gonna have possession time and uh, a couple of opportunities to shoot. You just gotta shoot the puck. So it'll be 22 seconds of five on three, then after that it will be a minute 38 of five on four as Charlie Penns will be able to rejoin the action. Excuse me, Daniel DeCristofaro will be able to rejoin. It's still Penns' number that's up there on the scoreboard that threw me. <laughs> And this is the second time that the Hattricks will be able to have an extended stoppage of play heading into a power play. They were able to set up a try that was a one-timer from Aaron Atwell mm -hmm. when this whole power play sequence started. Now they have an official timeout and not just some action in the corner where the ice needs to be replaced. And out there on the ice and posting up in the slot, it looks like, will be Shinkarik. And you wonder if they'll feed him for the one-timer, if they can get it back to him. It will be McIntosh and Ruiz in the face-off dotting. To the left of Karpinski, Ruiz wins it back. De Nicola is out there on the power play, his first power play shift of the game. Here's Aaron Atwell, crosses the way to Shinkarik. Shinkarik has room in front of him, gets it over now to Ruiz. Backdoor pass, they score! Power play goal, Nick De Nicola! 5-4 hat tricks! Wow, two huge goals for Nick De Nicola. This time he finds the back door. Beautiful pass across, I couldn't see the number. Well, that's a beautiful find, and Nick DiNicola, that's a tap-in goal for him, his second of the game. That's goal four and five in this game for the Hattricks, and another lead taker for the rookie, the Hattricks rookie, if you will. That's he the second time he's given them, the, I mean, that's a huge goal for Nick DiNicola, and that was a feed from Johnny Ruiz yes. from yep. the far side post. And the key thing about that, it comes only halfway through the five on three. So the Hattricks still have a minute and 48 mm -hmm. of power play time. So they can really sheath the dagger if they can find the back of the net. So the second of the game and his second as a member of the Danbury Hattricks in his first game for his hometown team. Well, you just said it, Casey. He got promoted to the top line of that power play unit, his first power play shift. It makes an immediate impact. I mean, he's had some really, really good plays tonight on both ends of the ice. But here comes Marker on a shorthand breakaway. Marker stoned cold by McGuckin. McGuckin up, up to the task, and now here come the hat tricks the other way in transition. Kasich gets it over to Gordy Bunnell with a minute 10 to go on the power play. Marker almost was able to bring it back to even with a breakaway shorthanded. Wow, another huge save by McGuckin. <laughs> I mean, you, you say, yeah, he's let in four goals up to this point, but the quality of chances that Delaware has had, it could be easily eight to five right now in favor of Delaware. Yeah, they haven't been outshot, or they have been outshot, but they've not been outchanced. 
And, and Tom McGuckin has been outstanding in between the pipes when he's needed to be. That's true. I mean, they've brought it down to where it's a more even shot advantage. It's 43 to 31, which, I mean, you look at it, it's only it's a 12-shot advantage, yes, but I mean, how many of those 31 shots on goal have been high quality? 30 seconds to go on the five on four. Here's Dearson entering in on the left wing as Bronner cutting to the net. Levesque at the point. Crosses the way to Shinkarik. He's got Ruiz at the right wing. So Nick DeNicola in his first power play shift too. Shot attempt by Ruiz is blocked by cutting. And DeNicola making an impact. He's a Johnny on the spot player for them as a pass intended for Dearson in the bumper position between the hash marks. Goes up a defensive skate and is covered up by Karpinski. 2.09 to go in regulation time, and the Hattricks now lead 5-4. to four. And these are the games where you start to see, yes, this is a Delaware team. We mentioned it at the top of the broadcast. They're hungry. They want to come out. They want to make a statement. Hey, this could be our series where the season changes for us. And if you're Danbury, you're riding that five-game win streak. This has been a tougher battle than I think you know, the first period alluded to. They fought. They fought. They have the lead. They have to hold it. Sharp angle, try, backdoor pass, they score! Send in the hats, it's Nick DeNicola! The first hat trick in hat tricks history! Wow, unbelievable. Literally the same play, just on the other side of the post. You're right, Casey, the first hat trick in hat tricks history, and it's the new guy, Nick DeNicola. It is a natural hat trick for the hat tricks. How else would you want to make your debut for your hometown squad? Nick DeNicola gives them the go-ahead goal and the security goal. That'll show him you belong in the lineup. Yeah. Look at that smile on his face, ear to ear. And you, you saw the, the first hat to hit the ice, Billy McCreary's yep. fedora. Yep. And wow, what a moment for Nick DiNicola, setting history in his first game. While the Hat City has hats raining down on the ice here tonight. Steve Brown will get a helper on the goal. That's Brown's second point of the season. As that shot attempt goes wide, as now a minute 50 separates the Danbury Hattricks from their eighth victory of the season and a key regulation win. If you get a little how do you do from the goal <laughs> over to my left, that startled me a little bit. <laughs> a minute 35 to go, and Gordy Bennell is doing work in the near side corner to try to tick, tick, tick away those precious seconds. Steve Brown pitching in at the near side. Brown takes it and will pitch fork it ahead. And You've got to be shaking your head if you're on the Delaware Thunder. You've got to be thinking, what do we have to do to close out a game? I go back to that Ryan Marker breakaway shorthanded when it was 5-4. Yeah, that's the difference maker. I mean, McGuckin makes that save. If he doesn't make that, it's it's a brand new ball game, and you know you might not have that opportunity for Din Elkola as the goaltender goes to the bench. Yep, the net is empty. Levesque has an empty net in front of him. Levesque shoots it wide, and a groan from the Danbury Atrix faithful as we hit the final minute. And it's just been one of those nights for Nikola Levesque. Pass out to the neutral zone. The Thunder are trailing two. Here's a shot attempt that's swallowed up by McGuckin and a roar of approval. As that one came off of the stick of Thomas Municello. 45.4 seconds to go in regulation time. Yeah, another good save there for, for McGuckin. And, you know, you look at the diagnosis for this one, Casey. It's, it's Delaware who's got the momentum through the majority of the, especially this first half of the third period. Then the power plays start to go in. Then the hat tricks start to find a rhythm on the power play and you see how much of an impact DeNicola is gonna be this season on that power play unit. I think he's earned a spot on that top, uh, that top unit today. And that's important because if Delaware doesn't take those penalties, if Danbury doesn't have those extra man advantage, this is still a 4-4 game. That's not what you want to do as a, t as a team with just two wins this season. You can't take penalties in, in, in crunch time like that. Absolutely. That's the difference maker, I think. So the Danbury Hattricks take a 6-4 lead. We are 45 seconds away from the conclusion of this one. We'll be back tomorrow night for the rematch.
7 p.m. tomorrow night on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. You can catch round two of the Hattricks against the Delaware Thunder. It is Teacher Appreciation Night. If you're an educator out there listening and you haven't signed up already, go to danburyhattricks.com slash teachers for a complimentary ticket and a pregame party at Buffalo Wild Wings. And you should have a great crowd on hand for that one as well. I'll be there. Will you be? <laughs> oh, you know I'm there. <laughs> Shot at 10th goes off of the stick of cutting and wide of the net. 40 seconds to go. Bull and Porter. Net is still empty. Six skaters out there for the Delaware Thunder. Entering in on the left side is Young. Drops it back to Cutting. Has marker to his right. Cutting with a clear shot that's steered aside by McGuckin. 25 seconds to go in regulation time. Slinging it through the blue paint. Finds its way to marker. Has Bull and Porter right in front of him. Bull and Porter forces the turnover. Here's Young in the near side corner with 15 seconds to go. Brown tying a man up. In the near side corner, Shinkarik forces it out into the neutral zone. Trickling back, Charlie Penns will get there. Five seconds ticking off the clock. They're on their feet at Danbury Arena. The Danbury Hattricks take a 6-4 victory over the Delaware Thunder. They improved to 8-4, 0-2. And are now in striking distance of second place in the Eastern Division. And that's their sixth straight win. You gotta be feeling really good if you're wearing black and orange. Uh, a very good gut check for this team because at the beginning of this game, you see, all right, they're cruising again. They're in good shape. And then Delaware slowly starts to chip their way back into this thing. It's 4-3. to three. Then they tie things up 4-4 four to four to start this uh, third period. And then the Hattricks lean on the new guy in, Nick DiNicola, who was very, very good. A hat trick. Natural hat trick. A natural hat trick for the hat tricks. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's really, really great. What a great story for him to come in here and make an instant impact. Steve Brown. Steve Brown will get to hoist the barrel. Brown, he got an assist on that second goal. Two assists, excuse me. And he played a very strong defensive game for the hat tricks. It's great to see him back and healthy in the lineup. And that's a recognition from his teammates. They want Steve Brown healthy because they know he's a heart and soul of this team as a veteran. Absolutely. And it's, it's great. I think it's also a tribute to the Danbury faithful who have watched him, who have praised him over the years through several different teams. And I thought he had a great game, too, at the back end. I thought he was sharp. I thought he played well in his own end. And uh, I can't, enough cannot be said about Tom McGuckin. Yes, he lets in those four goals. He saves 28 of 32, but he makes probably 10 or 12 really, really difficult saves. And he keeps this game in the hat trick's favor. They do enough to get that victory. The three goals from Di Nicola were huge for this team. And that's what you have to do for, for teams that want to be successful as the season develops is find ways to win, not just win by blowing teams out day after day. Yes, that's fun and all, but when the, the challenge pr pr proves itself to fight your way through it, you find a way to do it. They did it tonight in a, in a weird fashion, but a victory is a victory. They're announcing the three stars of the game. Third star went to Ryan Marker of Delaware, Carter Shinkarik who had himself not one, not two, not three, but four assists, three of them primaries tonight as he chucks a puck to a hat tricks faithful out in the crowd. And I, who else could be the number one star? But the hometown kid, Nick DiNicola, he looks right up to the 200s and chucks a puck up there. And a good catch. Yeah, Mike Tazi makes the play. <laughs> <laughs> Soft hands the beauty of it. Nick DiNicola with her first star of the game and that will just about do it here from Danbury Arena. We want to thank everyone here on the broadcast. What a game it was and we hope you'll join us tomorrow night at 7 p.m. as the Hattricks take on the Delaware Thunder. We want to thank our social media guru over to my left, Alexandra Sorianos and our camera person, Kevin Corza. For Jack O'Mara, I'm Casey Bryant. Have a good night.